YouTube as we just jump straight into it. Hi YouTube, hola, bienvenidos al canal. Jure mojen, jure ovond. Uh, buenas tardes, buenos días. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome on in, guys. I appreciate all of you guys being here. Hey, we're going to jump straight into it. I've heard nothing but like hype things from SB, from Nat, from everyone in here, quite literally coming on in and being the amazingness that they are. I am working through a little bit of a headache, giving you guys that heads up, uh, you know, so if you guys see me, like, literally take a little bit longer of a pause to drink my soda or drink my water or whatever, it's for that. I've already taken meds. I should be over soon enough. But through that, one of the biggest things that I, I, I do want to point out is, and this is sort of what I was talking to Chad a little bit earlier, is I'm excited to see Rudius start, start becoming, like, a hard version of himself, you know, for Rudius to start evolving and quite literally start becoming the bigger man that he needs to be, right? Because right now, good evening, everyone, good, because right now it, feel, it feels as though he's starting to take the steps towards recovery, and I know I made a huge post about it and all of that, right? I made a huge post about, like, Rudius and his evolution and everything, so hard as in, like, an individual that is able to go ahead and, like, take in a lot of his, like, past traumas and still keep evolving past that doesn't mean that you've healed 100%. It just means that, like, things won't phase you, phase you as much. So you have a more of a time of resilience, right? Con la jacket. ¿Por qué? Five hours stream, I will be here no matter what. That's what I'm excited about. I'm super duper excited about this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what else to say. I feel like Rudy, like this whole Moshko Tensei thing, I, I do want to call something out. Guys, real quick, my job is not to predict anything. There are a lot of people out there who are like, his whole thing is predicting shit. No, it's not. It, I, I, I will, all, will always and always time and time and time again will always disavow that. My thing is to observe behavior, see patterns, uh, observe their mental states, talk about the psychology behind it predictions i'm wrong like 99 percent of the time it, like we have like a survivor bias here where we look at like all the right predictions and the wrong predictions we're like man you know that didn't happen <laughs> Me encanta tu camisa. Ah, gracias. thank you i appreciate it uh, i tried to wear something a little bit different you know but uh hola como estas oh, oh my love como estas so that's why I'm, I'm going ahead and stating that out there. I'm also stating, hey, if you want to come and join us, usually every Sunday is Moshko Tensei and Zom 100 Sunday here on Twitch. Uh, it goes live throughout the week, so you guys have to wait a couple more days on YouTube. Uh, but come and join us. Friday's Arcane, and then throughout the week we have Heavenly Delusion. Um, although this coming week, there's, I have a, I'm going away for a little bit, you know. So next Sunday I will be starting. Wait, wait let, let, let me be let me be perfectly clear with y'all because I don't want to give you guys false hopes. Sunday the 30th, I will be starting way later uh, just because I am coming back from a trip that I'm taking. So I, I will probably be starting in the in, in the evening. You know, I'll give you guys a heads up. Also, as we jump into this, guys, I have one last thing. I want to show people that Moshko Tensei can bring everyone together. Guys, can you drop where you're from? I'm really, really curious. Just your country. Where is everyone from and how has Moshko Tensei brought you here, ladies and gentlemen? So, if you guys want to go ahead and drop that as we jump straight into this, and give me a hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a hell yeah as we jump into Moshko Tensei. This episode, ladies and gentlemen, that's been so fucking hyped. That's been so hyped, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a hell yeah. Drop some Doritos, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go straight into it if we can. Let's go. <laughs> you guys are fucking hype, I swear. All right, let's go, guys. Uh, check audio. Ah, uh, you see, I'm checking audio so that way you guys don't get like nothing. Uh, let's go. I, 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 hold on. <laughs> <laughs> We're 14 seconds in and I already had to stop. Hold on. And I'm not stopping for no reason. I'm stopping because this is so fucking cute. Hold on. I love... So there is something almost immediately happening here. There is something almost immediately... Ha I know. Pause number one of the day, ladies and gentlemen. You guys got it 14 seconds in. There is like an immediacy happening here. Is Sarah starting to evolve past, like, 
in relationship and attachment psychology, I always throw this word around, and a lot of people always ask me, Ed, what the fuck do you mean by that? Propinquity. We look at this, and what do we observe immediately from Sarah, right? Uh, What do we immediately observe from Sarah starting here, right? So Rudius takes his drink, and it seems as though he's starting to meld in a little bit more with Counter Arrow, right? He he yeah she's been doing like he's he's starting to meld in a little bit more since like with with counter arrow and he's taking his drink and he's yeah we all wear masks and you know we've addressed that but that deep stare at him before she drinks that is so interesting setting closer to him observing him than being happy to take that drink for herself as well like there is. There is some tension brewing in here that I am so not even tension. I'm just excited to see the the way that they that they do certain things, right? Like the way that they actually combine and gel in and their propinquity levels and why they're there. She likes what she sees. She's sitting closer. There's not much of a divide. Also, something that I can respect about the studio is the ba- the background people all have faces e- like pretty good. Pretty pretty good. Hold on. ¿Qué quieres, hermano? Rudeus ni ama, te has querido tan bien. Sa su gaba doro no mada. Ie, mina san no ugo ki ga ii kara, boku mo are dake ugo kiru no desu. Mata mata geisho shichatte. Ano ikken ilai, ore wa counter aro to hotondo issho ni. Yeah, she's sitting much closer to him. Look, <laughs> this is what I love about like, uh, like, like this, right? Baby, don't hurt me no more. Let's pay attention to this. How much space is in between Rudy and Sarah versus Sarah and my guy? I, for, I forgot his name. Like, the space between these two is a lot bigger. A lot bigger than the close between these two, you know. Is that Timothy? I thought Timothy was this guy over here. Yeah, that's Patrick. Patrice, yeah. Mods, can you make a poll for me real quick? And, I, and I'll ask this on YouTube as well. Mods, the poll is going to be for you. Who is best girl? Roxy, Sarah, Eris, Sophie. Uh, who else should we throw in there? Um, why don't we throw Elena Lace in there? I'm genuinely curious about everyone in here. Like, in, in what terms? <laughs> yeah, I threw in there Elena Lace just because it. Setting this one out, Lena? No. All right, the poll is now active. I'm genuinely curious. Has anyone shifted your perspective in terms of, like, who you like, who you prefer as an individual, who you think you could get along with, or so on and so forth? Ladies and gentlemen, go wild with the poll. The reason why I'm saying this is, like, it feels much more like a family dynamic and a family unit, and I am scared of this. I am scared that, like, in a way, Rudius is healing, right? He's taking these steps for healing. And, and and if you've ever gone through a really bad breakup and you've had friends that try and push you onto, uh, I don't know how to put it, like they, you, like your friends try and push you to heal, even unknowingly, like you're moving way too quickly. What happens? What happens, ladies and gentlemen? This is this is one thing that I'm wondering. I'm wondering if, I I'm wondering if. Like, he is taking these steps. It might be months. It might be whatever. But for Rudy himself, we have to talk about our own perspectives, right? It might be like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm whatever. I'm, I'm healed. I'm whatever. But is he really? Is he really? Like, he's interacting with everyone. But no one just heals 100%. There are a lot of people that try and say people heal in one day. And in my line of work as a psychologist, I've never seen that happen. It always takes people a long, long time to to start healing, you know? I was still waiting for the selfie to get enough screen time to have 30% of the votes. Like, there, yeah, there, there are some people that have literally, like, you know, straight up argued and told me, hey, wait a minute. People can heal in one day or people can change in one day. And I'm like, change started happening before the point of time where you realize you needed to change. So change wasn't just a one day thing. Change was more than likely something that, that had been in your mind for a good period of time. About a year has passed since meeting them for the first time, if I'm correct. So a lot of time has passed. Hi, Ed. How did you like the babies yesterday? Alice, you scarred me. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been scarred by Heavenly Delusion. <laughs> so let, let me throw this out there. 
How long was Rudy with Eris, real quick? How long was Rudy with Eris? Like, with, like walking with Eris and the whole demon continent? Three years. Okay, so in case you guys don't know, one of my theses was on relationship, like attachment and dissolution and self-perceived recovery time. Otherwise known as how we attach ourselves in a relationship uh, when we break up and how long it takes for us to start healing. And oftentimes, something that starts popping up is it takes roughly around half the amount of time in a relationship for a person to automatically start like the full heal process, right? Like they might still feel like even two years down the line that there are memories and aspects in them, but it's not going to hurt as much. Like you start that recovery process from the moment that you break up, right? And this was an average, right? This is something that popped up and it was like statistically significant that in that process, right? He's, he lasted like what, three years, five years, about six years. Oh, six years, six years. So, in that process, right, what, what what ended up happening was, in it, like, let's say it's six years, right? So three years would probably be the medium time for him to at least start, like, not want to say fully healed, but at least, like, he's just, like, moving on. He recognizes that that's his past. He's doing whatever. One year in, can he still feel the pain? More than likely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, a year and a half in, is he still going to feel the pain? Yeah, more than likely. Absolutely. Do you start masking, though? Yes, a lot of people mask and we all mask differently. Some people, you know, once that breakup, once that situation happens, what do they start doing? Start fucking around. You know, they start going around being with multiple people because for them, they like going ahead and like releasing their trauma out that way, right? They can release their emotions out that way. And for them, they think they feel, but later on down the road, something may trigger them again. Yeah, so you learn to cope with the pain, but not completely forgotten it. Exactly. And you never truly forget the pain. And that's something in there. Unless, and this is my big thing, someone comes in and changes your world. If someone, like, this this is another area of statistical significance. When someone comes in and is your home, is your safety, is allows you to be vulnerable, and you feel a connection with them that you didn't feel with the other individual, like, when the breakup happened or whatever, you know what happens? You can take half that time and reduce it in half again because that person is allowing you to hit your developmental milestones and like grieving processes and all of that things for yourself. Because when you break up, when you go through like even, even even displacement, you have to go through a grieving process. Rudy, now that I'm thinking about it, Rudy might have literally, when he was displaced, started grieving, right? Now that like... You know, everyone goes through a grieving process, but he had to put it off because he prioritized Eris. Eris goes away, right? That whole she left him type of thing happens. So what happens? The grieving process starts again. Oh. Oh, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Things are making a lot more sense for me. It's like. Thinking about it from from quite literally like a grief perspective, a grief psychology perspective, if Ruger never left, what do you think what happens? Honestly, if Ruger never left, I think he might have like Ruger might have pushed him to start healing, but at the same time, he won't be able to stop all the pain, right? And even with Eris there, Eris would still have to make a choice, right? Like if Eris was there with Ruger and uh, Rudy, Eris still has to make a choice. Does she want to go ahead and train to be better and meet him? Or what is what are her plans? Like, oof, oof. Yeah, I'm so glad I got, oh man, I, I'm, I'm excited. Anyway. Quagmire. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, my man, my man, man. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Where's it at? Where's it at? I know it's somewhere down here. Hold, give, give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. I need to, I need to. Here it is. Rudy, right now, being like, uh, it's time. <laughs> Rudy, being like giggity. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, 
僕は剣術より魔術の方に才能があったみたいでロキシーという魔術師を家庭教師として呼んだんですよその人女の人はい僕のし Bro, bro, careful here. Careful, careful. <laughs> Rudy, careful here. Brother, 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 brother. I love the way that, like, she, she, she went into this. Hold on. We got to dissect this a little bit, a little bit closer, right? We, focus, Rudy. Focus. We got to dissect this just a little bit closer here. I know she got him in a trap. It's like one of those things, like, oh, who's your best friend? And your best friend's a girl. And, like, the girl you like is just staring at you, like, <laughs> I know so much jelly, but it's also the form of connection. If if we're gonna be if we're gonna be straight up about it, right? How many of you have fallen into a trap like that? I have, right? I I have legitimately like even with all of my knowledge, I still fall for traps like that. Where you know I wouldn't even call them traps. I'm, I I would call them just like uh, conversational dead ends that might take a conversation into another direction, and you have to try and find a way out of that. We're only human, after all, right? So, as we're going through this, right? Was that a shark cat? No, this is a pr primal predator uh, T Rex looking at. <laughs> it's a trap. But no, let's let's observe her body language for Sarah here. Hold on, guys. Because this is something I'm I'm kind of kind of interested in here hold on Ken Hirai, Orewa Kaunta Ro Thanks so much for the follow man Kodo Surio in Data Namai Mojuven Shirewatari Dorunuma no Rudeus to you Namaiga Shuhen no Muramura Made Kikirio in Natekita Kawata Kotoga Mohitz Sarato no Kyoriga Chikakuna Kotoda Okay, so what is she doing? Guys what is she doing, legitimately? Aside from getting closer, what is this? We do this as humans un subconsciously, unconsciously. She's pinging, yeah. She's closing the distance, she's pinging, she's testing boundaries right here, right now. Do you like me? There's a physical aspect of connection that we all have, which is why, like, in case you're ever in a setting, right, and someone that really likes you or whatever, right, it'll be the most subtle of, like, touches for pretty much anything. Like, hey, yo, do you like that? Whatever, right? Touch on the shoulder. A lot of people don't like that because it's a boundary thing, right? You can express love and try and get close with, like, emotions and words and whatnot. But for a lot of people, we ping the other person Right, the person that we like or whatever, physically. Yeah, and and in her her situation, I'm kind of curious what she thinks. Building the bonding connection. Ooh, yeah, testing the boundaries. She's testing the boundaries because here's the thing. Like, let's say that, let's say that the mic is I don't know you guys, right? And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I'm not touching the mic. I'm just oh, out here for all you audio people. I'm not touching the mic. Trust me. I know. I've got. I've gotten warned whenever I did my yaoi one time. Like, hey, 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 and like I'm getting no feedback. I'm like, do you like me or don't you? So next thing I'm gonna do, hey, daisuki da yo. You don't like that? Oh shit. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. Okay. So what do I do next? What if I get really really close to you right and now that we're this close you can't really say anything so now i'm testing you right here and it's it's time and time it, it's talk dirty to me no but it's time and time again that we do this even unconsciously to try and get a ping out of someone so i'm wondering for sarah what has allowed her to start taking these moves is she's comfortable being in this position of power where she's the one that's testing rudius's boundaries getting me bricked up <laughs> Like, let's make kittens, yeah, or whatever. But, like, is she comfortable taking this position of power? Like, because I'm assuming that, like, she's been dropping this, these hints for a while, and probably Rudius hasn't picked up on it. Or maybe he has, and he's questioning himself. So that's sort of what I'm going for, right? It's about drive. It's about power. <laughs> we stay hungry. We just... <laughs> Oh, dude, you fucking dropped that right in the middle of it. So, Her line of questioning here is so amazing, right? 
Like, let's back it up just a little bit. And I know some of you guys might be like, what the fuck are you on about? Dude, just trust me. Trust the process on this. You, like, I I feel like I'm understanding Sarah in, like, a deeper level than I probably ever should. But, like... <laughs> Okay, so you're right. Why does she start off with this statement? Well, my dad was a hunter, so I've been practicing archery since I was a kid. What does that do for you? What does that do for you? For me, like, this is this is telling me, like, a couple main things. Number one, she's trying to form any form of connection with you. She's trying to get a story out of you. She's trying to allow you to go ahead and pinpoint your aspects like this, right? Because here's my thing. She did like she could have said this any other way, right? Oh yeah, my dad was a hunter. I've been practicing archery forever. However, the way that she's referencing this, and this is something to to keep to keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is prompting. This is a way of literally like grabbing that, like hitting hitting the ball to the other side of the court in such a nice way. Where now Rudy has to open up about his past. Why? Because of the way that she ended it. Sarah is Sarah's doing this unconsciously, probably unconsciously, right? And she's attaching weight of her story and allowing Rudy to start opening up. And this is something that we do <clears throat> unconsciously, but it's such a beautiful thing to go ahead and do, you know? <clears throat> Hold on. So, for example, when my dad was a hunter, establishes that this is stories about someone that go ahead, like, uh, so I've been practicing archery. Before we even get to since I was a kid, establishes a role model of someone that has taught you something, and then what they've taught you, something that you're you're known for, right? Since I was a kid, i.e., let's reflect back on your past. The way that she structured this sentence is so fucking beautiful that it automatically allows you to go ahead and start opening up, right? Because if you don't, if you're like, oh, that's cool, what do you do? You just shut her down. Family. Woo! It's also a safe conversation starter. It is. It is. That's why I still use a bow, even though it's not the best for adventuring. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that, like, Rudy seems to be paying attention. I, I'm curious, is Rudy afraid of opening up? Because this is this is what Rudy is doing, right? Say that you are Sarah, and like literally, like you have this perspective of me. My my body is still facing this way. Super curious. How do you guys feel about this? Are you guys okay with this? Usually, right, and and I feel like this is Rudy trying to go ahead and like compose himself and still, not, you know, maintain an aspect of like maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't know, maybe he feels like they're just friends or he's still questioning stuff, right? I w I would be quite a little little questioning because usually when we talk to someone, we tend to go ahead and open up even just a little bit. And my body is still a little bit more turned this way. I'm just like you know turning turning a little bit of my side just to give you a little bit more of attention wise, right? This is full attention, if we're going to go ahead and call it this way, where my body, everything is turned to see to seeing you. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm like, I'm throwing this out there. Like, it, it is, it would be okay if you open your shirt a little more when facing like that. Okay, you ready? You ready? I'm going to, I'm going to open up my shirt completely. You guys are, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but that's the main point that I'm getting at is like, it is clear. It is evident that like, there is still some sort of attention, like that Sarah draws Rudy is like, you know, with anyway, free the lips. Hey, yo, Ed is letting his inner Paul come out for a bit. I know, I know, just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, so he's saying that he's going to go ahead and <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, <laughs> Rudy about to spray Roxyism everywhere <laughs> subconsciously. Like, so Rudy, you know, 
how you know what do you think about water magic well my my master roxy uh my goddess my my <laughs> you see this underwear here you, you you see this calzones these these undergarments i have here yeah these are these are my masters just you want to smell they smell of goddess of victory <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a way of doing shit. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> oh, so. Oh, so. Oh, so. Look at her face. I fucking called it, bro. I fucking called it. Look at her face, dude. Immediate shutdown and she just turns away. Like, oh, yeah. She's the most amazing person ever. Oh, yeah. Bro. Rudy, bro, we, we gotta we gotta have Paul teach you some things, brother. Uh, n not all things, no, not all things. Just just some, um, uh, you know, something. He unknowingly shut her down, right? これがまたすごい人でしてね。<laughs> <laughs> I wonder how the rest of the group feels, dude. Like, honestly, if I was in that group, I'd be like, go Rudy, go Rudy, go Rudy, go Rudy. <laughs> I'm over here talking to, like, uh, Thomas and all these other guys, and we're like, dude, it's happening, it's happening. Uh, the, the younglings, it's happening. Like, you know, like, all of us just, like... <laughs> Uh, go Sarah. I know, go Sarah. Yeah, yeah, more than likely. It's probably a bunch of shippers. They are. I do like how she rebounds back, though. So that means that her attraction to Rudy has been growing. Her attraction to Ru Rudy is, like, incrementing. And that's what happens with propinquity. This is why, for example, I I'm going to go ahead and throw out a term. I'm going to throw out a term, and I want you guys to tell me how you feel about it. If you had a partner, right, and they came home and they're like, oh, yeah, would you like would you like to meet my work wife or work husband? How would you feel about that? I'm, I'm throwing out this term out there. How would you feel about that if your partner came home and stated something like that? <laughs> so the reason why I'm saying that, like, I know you guys are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean? I feel very sus about work wife, work husband uh, type. Do th you mean a home divorce? What is that? So oftentimes in a lot of work cultures, a lot of individuals for some reason have started to adopt the words like work wife or work husband, i.e. individuals that you spend a majority of your time in, you know, when you're working with. So like it's like people that you care about, people that you relate to. Uh, so on and so forth, right? So you'll often hear, like, I've heard this in conversational settings as well, where they're like, oh, yeah, like, you know, that's my work wife or that's my work husband. Doesn't always have to be flirty or anything like that. But people are using terms like that. And for me, it makes me wonder, right? Is this because of propinquity? And in instances where you work a lot with another, like, person, right? Where you start to learn a lot more about them and you have these inside jokes and you have... 101 why are you using terms like that yeah yeah but the, the reason why i'm highlighting this is because it happens like natural propinquity friendships and whatnot always happens in any environment even if you hate a person in their guts right the moment that they leave you might be like yes they left they left this work environment and then you're like but they actually brought something of value huh i hope the next person isn't as bad as them but they will be missed you know after a long time Always found people like that a little cringe. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why I'm highlighting this is because of, of the relationship here, right, of everything happening, is I am beyond curious about how Counter Arrow, like Counter Arrow might be a group of shippers, right? Like they might be shipping this this environment. But I'm also wondering for Sarah, since it takes her a while to open up, has she had any other relationships? Because if this is her first relationship and she is this forward, first off, color me impressed. Second off, the trauma that may come from this, double it and give it to the next person. Because fuck, dude. 
<laughs> this is not a healthy one to get into, Sarah. This is not a healthy one to get into. <laughs> the trauma that you get from the... Oh, no. no. He also rescued her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of that, like... Eris already doubled it for Rudy, and now Rudy's just about to... <laughs> I can fix her. <laughs> To everyone in chat, okay, I'm done. Udan was so be no tail any with Cater and the Kedua Hakobore Mohido could not take chat there. So did the other she tanking or co cannot tell Mutt in the Kedua. Rudy says, I stopped the Hima. They is any kind of can I? It is yo, Ikimashoka. Kimadidane. That's me, bro. That's me. I'm just Thomas over here smiling my ass off like, let's go. <laughs> oh, dude. It's a date. It is a date. And they know. They know. But he don't know. He don't know. My, my dude is like, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on, chat. Hold on. He Like, my dude is legitimately, legitimately, Rudy is, is, is just like, yeah, like you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing friends, amazing everything, right? And so, like, pretend you guys are Sarah, right? Like, hey, guy, would you come and look for me with me for, uh, like, you know, for a new sword? Like, we can go and, like, you know, do whatever. Yeah, sure. I guess. <laughs> He's like an unknowing fucking Andy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he just straight up just like <laughs> yeah, no well, you kind of peon right hey ed want to go sword fighting tomorrow i i guess but this is why i'm highlighting aspects like this it's like sometimes we're so <laughs> sometimes we're so clueless and we're so dumb especially when we're like in trauma brain that like people can be flirting with us people can literally be like sitting on top of us right and we don't even know. We don't even understand. Like, we're, we're there and we're just like, okay. Like, uh, like it, that, that's that's the aspect that I'm getting at here is like, it's cute and all. And I'm glad that they're not forcing it because the moment that you force an interaction or a relationship to happen, it's bound. It's bound to break. And it's bound to hurt double. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally the duck. <laughs> it's safer to assume they're not flirting than think they are flirting and reject you. True. True. He's not dense. He's not dense, boys. He's not dense. Anyway. Oh. Hold on. What is his face? My dude looks like a ditto. <laughs> I love, don't get me wrong. I love the way that like all of this is animated, right? In terms of like her dress decided and whatnot. But Rudy looks a little bit like a ditto. Uh, that's an icon ironic tower. Wait, why? Okay, hold on. Look at this. I I'm going to go ahead and bring this up full screen just for one second. Editors, edit this out, please. Look at Rudy. Just look at the eyes, bro. Yeah. that That's the only thing that I was like, huh, that's a little interesting. It's a ditto phase. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's the <a> real face. <laughs> oh. She looks she looks really cute, Rudy. You gotta at least say that. Like it's like if I went on a date with like Nick or Alice or uh Mashiro or whatever, you gotta be straight up about it. You just gotta be like, dude, to like you look so like you know, you look wonderful. Give, give me a twirl, you look absolutely fantastic, you know? Like, let's go. <laughs> Oh. 
Okay, is it just me or are we focusing a lot on like phallic objects and banging? Hold on. <laughs> Like, like I know they're hunt, they're going for swords and stuff, but it, it, it like the very first like scene that we get here is like Rudy with like a giant tower that's out of left field here, man. El que tiene hambre and get and pan piensa. No, no digas eso, way. Maybe it's just a cigar. It could be. No, Paul. No, I mean Ed. I know the tower's from the last episode. It's nice though. But look at the way that. Ugh. Come on, guys. You can't tell me that she's not dropping hints, bro. You can't. Look at where her figure is and what she's doing, brother. Like, even subconsciously, we fucking do things like this. This is the thing about, like, humans and individuals. We literally, like, we do some of the stupidest things to show that we're flirting. Like, look at the way, like, like just just look at it, bro. Just look at her fingers, bro. Just look at the way that, like, she's, like, you know, blushing and talking. It's just a tip, bro. It's just a tip. Like, ain't no way, dude. I'm gonna back it up a couple seconds. That way you guys don't think I'm fucking crazy. Look. Look. But she's talking about arrows. Oh, okay. So what do you mean? Aww. Aww, they're cute though. How can Rudy fuck this up? How can they fuck this up? If Sarah's already, if someone's already showing strong feelings, strong emotions, strong everything towards you, how can you fuck it up? There's a couple of ways. How can he not existing? I mean, like, there's a clear show of interest, and I think a big thing in that is just taking your partner's feelings into considerations as well. Which I'm, I'm really curious. How are we going to transition from this? And I know that there's a school art coming, and we've we've been talking about this for a while. How are we going to transition from this into the school art? Do you think Rudy likes her? I mean, she's beautiful. I I don't I don't see why not. Right? Why you can like someone and not love them? You know, like I, I'm just going to be straight up about it. There seems to be some people that don't think that that's possible. You can have meaningless sex. You can literally go out there and have, like, the most romantic sex ever. You can be with someone, right, and not like them or, or not love them. You can like them and not love them and so on and so forth. Like, there's different layers of love that are always present, right? But do I think that this is healthy? I think him taking the steps... Yeah, to start healing is healthy. However, do I, what I think as a psychologist looking in, that this relationship would be one that, like, you know, is a heal all, be all, that they'll end up together forever and ever? No, probably not. Um, a couple reasons why. Number one, this is his first relationship out of a really, really bad breakup, right? And what happens after you come out of a relationship, a really, really bad breakup? It's your rebound. I'm gonna call it how it is. It usually is a rebound for a lot of um, some people do find their love of their life. I'm not downplaying those, but for a great majority, if we were to do a bell curve, it is a it is a big rebound. You know, he can't see an individual in a romantic sense. However, it doesn't mean that you see them in a relationship sense, right? You can lust after someone. You can be like, wow, they're so fun, they're so amazing, they're so whatever. That doesn't mean that you want them as a partner. Right. Or you might want them as a partner, but maybe you, you yourself are still traumatized and hurt. And there's a lot of like of layers that go into this. Imagine she asking what the altar is for. Bro, her tie. Holy shit. <laughs> if she asked him that, that's uh, yeah, he's searching for something to fill the hole in his heart. OK, good. 
楽しかったいろいろ見て回ると新しい胸当ても欲しくなるね今のやつじゃダメなんですか、うん、結構前に買ったのだから最近ちょっとだけきつくってさあっあっルディルディ It's those Paul jeans brother <笑>ルディ brother brother Hey, yo. <laughs> She's being really open about like situations and stuff, though. Take the, take the hint, my boy. Take the hint, my boy. But also, she's being really open about like, you know, situations and stuff like this. Granted, it might not appear that way, but we also have to remember would you say this? Would you be this open、uh, to someone, like, literally a random person? Would you, feel, would you find yourself being this open to, to a random person or to a friend? What about someone that you're interested in? So, this is where you start finding out where your boundaries start going ahead and start shifting, right? There's some stuff that I'm not going to tell my friends that I like, I would tell my partner, right? <clears throat> There's some stuff that, like, you know, I would tell my parents that I would never tell my friends. Or some stuff that I would tell my partner that I would never tell my parents or my friends, right? Like, we all have different boundaries and lines and regulations and stuff. So, I'm super curious that, like, she's been on the, on the hunt here. She's the one that's, like, been pinging. She's the one that's been making these plans. She's the one that made this date. She's the one that went ahead and, and pinged so much. Rudy is just on the defensive end. Psychologically speaking, I'm fucking terrified. I,、uh, hold on. I'm gonna bring this up now. Psychologically speaking, I am terrified, right? Which is, let me go ahead and bring this up.、Um, and I'm terrified for two reasons. Number one, being whenever you're always on the defensive end and you never have an opportunity to showcase yourself and what you want, what happens? What happens? Emotions. You might be feeling all kinds of emotions, but yeah, Predator Sarah out to get a bite. But. <clears throat> Realistically speaking, what I'm throwing out there is how would you feel if someone is making all the plans for you consistently, even unknowingly? So,、um, here we go. Hold on. There's one. I, people have always asked me. Hold on. Two. Three. This is, what I, this is what I'm fucking terrified of. And if people make fun of this, if you, if you make fun of this, like, and, and if you guys start making fun of this in, in, in a way, I'm,、uh, like, and if this comes true in any way, shape, or form, rather well said, I am going to be super duper. Like, I'm gonna call you out on it, right? Because this is actually a very real, real fucking thing that comes through. So, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring this up. Hold on. So, this is from NCBI, otherwise known.、Uh, a lot of psychologists, a lot of people use、uh, either SAGE, APA, whatnot. And this goes into the relationship between post traumatic stress disorder, otherwise known as any form of relationship dissolution, which might fit into this category in sexual difficulties. This is a review of veterans, but you can also look at different aspects here Taiwan,、uh, quite literally, post traumatic stress disorders, whatever, right?、Um, When we look at this, though, let's go all the way to the conclusions. That way, you guys understand what I'm talking about. PTSD, this is what they found, is linked to a range of sexual outcomes. The current literature is that PTSD is associated with sexual difficulties related to the sexual response cycle, otherwise known as sexual trauma, and one's emotional regulation, sexual activity, and distress. So, we go on to another one, otherwise known as why can an individual like, have difficulties, like, literally. Being in love, like having there. So, this is what I like when I'm noticing when situations and stuff keep popping up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. NCBI and males and so on and so forth. So, th th this is why I'm, I'm throwing this out there is because PTSD is a very, very real thing. This is like, and, and as we're looking through it, like you guys can look it up NCBI,、uh, Sage, any of the actual peer reviewed. 
institutions out there will showcase this, man. It will showcase this and it'll prove that like big trauma, major trauma, um, even at an early age going forward, what you'll end up finding is your sexual response cycle is thrown off. A lot of people, there is statistical significance in usual like erectile dysfunction or displeasure in the bedroom, uh, difficulty connecting with others, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly why I bring this up. Remember to be respectful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sean respetosos. Yeah, th these research papers. But that's 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 the key. That's an aspect that that is being thrown out there. And this is why well, for me I'm seeing Sarah push and she's pushing and she's pushing and she she's like, you know, like she's throwing out all of her stuff out there. Rudy is still taking steps. What happens for someone? Yeah, they might feel lust. They might feel want. They might feel desire. They might feel 101 things. Like, if we were to even look here. Hold on. Rudy might be like, holy shit, wait a minute. What What does he want with Sarah? What is he feeling with Sarah? Sarah doesn't really get what she's aiming at. I mean, subconsciously, like, consciously she might know, not know, but subconsciously she's throwing out a lot of hints. And she's taking in a lot of... Uh, So, what does Sarah want, and what what is like Rudy? What will Rudy as get out of a situation like this? People, this is the way that love is, right? This is different forms of love. You can you you can express yourself in one way. Usually, a lot of people idolize con consummate love, which is intimacy, it's passion in the relationship, it's commitment. But when we're looking at this, what what is more likely the, the outcome out of this? What is more than likely the outcome out of this? Let's be honest. What what does Rudy want out of this? You think it's romantic love, passion, and intimacy? I don't see any commitment in here. I don't see any form of commitment. So we can eliminate all of this, right? So it's more than likely either liking, romantic love, or infatuation. For Sarah, right? No, commitment is quite literally like... Cough me. You and I are in a relationship together. We don't have sex. We're not really emotional, emotionally vulnerable together. But we're committed to one another, despite the fact that we might hate one another for the kids. That is empty love. That is just pure commitment. We're not gonna. We're not gonna get a, get a divorce. We're not gonna get anything. We're just gonna stick together because we're partners, and we said that we would go ahead and be partners forever and ever. Right. So, for example, intimacy and commitment is like how open you are in that case, right? Are you able to be intimate with your partner and still be committed in that? Are you, is there passion in here? Is there like some long living passion? So this is why I'm, I'm throwing this out there. What about Rudy? How does he feel? Is he even capable of going for a full cycle of love here? So this is why I'm highlighting aspects like this, man. Because for me, it's like I'm looking at Sarah. I'm looking at this relationship and Rudy's on the defensive end. Like, Rudy is not the one that's pinging ball. Like, you know, if they're playing a, a round of chess, around the chess. Yeah, around the chess. Sarah is like, I'm going to do my opening move. And she does like the, uh, you know, she she does like a, a standard opening move. And Rudy is just still thinking. And Sarah's like, I'm going to do my next move. I bring out my knight. Rudy still hasn't moved. And she's like, and Rudy's like, finally, I decided to move a pawn. She's like, well, I'm going to move three people now. And Rudy's still like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. Sarah's moving on a little bit faster than probably Rudy is ready for. And this is what's going to cause a uh, distortion in here. And we already have different parallels of quite literally everything. Like Rudy might like her. Rudy might find her hot. No one's going to take anything away from that. But is this relationship going to be on equal grounds when the whole time only one person has been making all the moves? Sarah's father was a hunter. She's a hunter too. And Rudy is her prey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. She does it again. She does it again. <laughs> she does it again. No. Sarah. 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 Ludus to Shudato. Say, 
なんでかなルーデウスのそばだと安心するからかなこれはあれだろうかいわゆる脈ありというやつなのだろうかああ<笑>いわゆる脈ありというやつなんだろうか Bro, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I've seen so many. I, I've seen so many. So many. Oh my god. I've seen. Okay. So I had a social psychology class, right, a while ago. And one of the aspects in that class, a social psychology class, was being able to go, to go out in public and make friends and talk in bars and clubs and stuff like that. And you had these people that are like the, like, Stereotypical like Discord mods that are like, where, where's my Discord kid in? You know, like th that type of, of guys, right? In the class that were just studying, you know, trying to study a little bit of psychology or whatnot. And a part, point of the class is you have to go out there and you have to talk to people and you have to be open to like literal conversations, actually having、um, full on discussions with random strangers and being open about it. And what you would find is like when they would find someone, right, that they were into, you would see the <laughs> and it's like, bro, I would just walk past him and just like, bam. I'm like, you're, you're already there. They're already leaning into you. Just bam, just go, dude. Just have that talk. And if not, be like, oh shit, oh, like, you know, sorry, whatever, right? It's okay to be wrong. It's also okay to apologize. Like, some people are really, really、uh, scared of. Taking that next step, right? And this is terrifying, I think, for anyone, especially when, when you start realizing, holy shit, there might be something here. That sounds like hell on earth. What kind of torture was your professor putting you on through? Notice me, Senpai. It was actually a really good way because, as a therapist, as a psychologist, we have to be open to having uncomfortable situations and conversations appear, right? So we have to be open to analyzing and understanding behaviors that are present. Um, we have to be open to analyzing body language, open to being able to go ahead and understand nonverbal cues, open to be able to go ahead and like lead a conversation and be able to go ahead and like,、um, I wouldn't say insert because that sounds wrong, but be able to go ahead and go in there and like have a meaningful connection with someone and then be able to go ahead and form another meaningful connection with someone and not let the nose bring us down. Because even in, in therapy, as a psychologist, it's whatever. I've, I've encountered this, and I'm sure every other therapist and psychologist in the world has encountered this. How was your day? No. How do you respond to that? Are you doing good today? No. Tell me more. No. So, when you start encountering giant walls and stuff like that, like, and it's not even patience, this is why we were doing it in a social psychology setting. Uh, in a social setting, when you encounter walls like that, you have to be able to know how to move around and allow someone to open up. You know, you, you can wait in silence, but a person might still just be there in silence as well. So you have to know how to allow a person to open up. Although, with my teenagers, all I have to say is something like, My hero academia. And they're like, <gasps> You know, my hero? <gasps> and I'm like, No, I just know. <laughs> <laughs> my hero academia. Or you could say something like Uran High School Host Club. And then they just like, <gasps> Thanks so much for the follow, man. Oh, there's an ad happening at the moment. Holy shit. That's cheating. That's cheating. Baited. Although, one person, if you're watching this right now, because I know I, I've like, heard some of you guys' talks in group, leave. If you're watching this right now and you're from any of my group therapy, group counseling classes, leave. Don't come back. No, no, no. No, this is adult hour. This is adult hour. <laughs>、uh, me when I teach how to reveal current memes, right? Dude, yeah. It's <laughs> straight up. Anyway, <laughs> be gone. Sorry. Okay, go. I'm going. そろそろ前のことを忘れて次に進まなければならないと思っていたところだ I mean you're right but that's only the start of the process Rudy Oh no Oh no Rudy 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 does a stereotypical thing bro Like、uh, I'm feeling a little tipsy Oh I'm feeling a little tipsy And Rudy's like 
Let's go to bed. <laughs> Rudy, brother, I love that you're like, you know, the inner Paul's coming in, like, but, uh huh. <laughs> そろそろ遅いし、帰りましょうか。宿まで送りますよ。ここは慎重に行こう。確実に行けるタイミングを狙うべきだ。そうだろう、パウロ。What <笑> <笑> that up at the very end? Bro, and she hasn't even drunk anything. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> you channel Paul, bro? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Bro, like, I would have at least paid attention to where she's at in the drink. Like, come on, brother. Come on. What would Paul do? Paulism. <laughs> Wait, maybe Rudy shouldn't have been asking that because I think we all know what Paul would do uh, and what he has done and hasn't done so far, right? What if you think another girly... Well, Wait, girl, while with being someone else, why does it mean? What does it mean if you think of another girl while being with someone else? Uh, it probably, if it's someone out, someone that you've been in a relationship with in the past, it probably means you haven't healed. If it's someone that, like, uh, it, 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 it's, it's your body is essentially screaming at you to stop or something like that, you know? Uh, Paul would have been in bed with her a week ago. Yeah, yeah. Paul's amazing, dude. I, I I I made a whole video where I'm like, I'm sorry, I was wrong about Paul because I was fucking wrong about Paul. Paul is such an interesting character to look at and dissect because he has fucking flaws. We all have flaws. But because, like, Paul as an individual, like, I don't know, man. It's like, despite all the hurt, despite all the trauma, despite everything, like, he's still trying, you know? Uh, the audience should say, where is Paul? Yeah, where is Paul? Bro, she wasn't ready. My boy. <laughs> My boy. My boy. <laughs> My boy. <laughs> Everyone in the chat, type in, run! <laughs> run! Corre! Don't look back. Don't look back. You are literally fucking prey right now. Run! <laughs> Rudy, corre, run! Oh. <laughs> All aboard? Oh, no. Oh no. Oh. Okay, mods. Mods, what what was the times again that I have to go ahead and take off the, the screen dingy? Please. Please. Mods, 640 to 718. Okay. I'm a little scared. Oh, God. Not stream, save content warning in 60 seconds. Mm, what they said. Okay, keep as, as we get closer, keep typing it in. I, I will state this, though. I will state this. The fact that, like, this is becoming more and more apparent, right? In terms of like he he overthinkers. Guys, how do you think that overthinkers are usually in bed? Especially when like you're like, oh yeah, should I go with the flow? Holy fucking shit. What the fuck should I go ahead and do? Let let's call let's call it out. My dude has trauma. My dude has PTSD. Insecure. There might be a little bit of insecurity. If you haven't done it in a while, how is that for you? Anxious. What is okay? Hold on. What is sex? 
They would freeze up. There, there's a lot of different possibilities. If you overthink in bed, it's harder for you to perform. I'm just gonna be straight up about it. If you're not, if you don't allow yourself to feel pleasure and to be there in the moment, it's a lot harder for you to perform. Well, trauma make it. Yeah, trauma can make a person freeze freeze up. Hi, Vsauce, Eddie here. <laughs> um, to focus on the partner, but here's, but here, but that's my question is. When, because a lot of people, and even to today, they only think of sex as a very basic, you put it in, you go. When the sex is more than just that, right? As an overthinker who hasn't done it e either, I can only imagine I'd be turbo nervous. Yeah, well, there's anth like instances of anxiety, there's instances of so on and so forth, but like, sex is cooperative, athletic activity, practice, health, mentality is super important. So as we're going through this, like I've already brought up some actual peer-reviewed research articles in NCBI about the way that trauma, um, especially with like Rudius's trauma, can affect the person's sexual desire, their performance, and everything, so on and so forth. So I'm making this assumption that he's going to fuck up. And I'm making this assumption based on the fact that that relationship dissolution still weighs heavily on his mind. I'm making this like on the belief pattern that he like he's just started noticing the fact that like, oh, shit, I might have there might be a possibility. I've never really thought of her this way. So on and so forth. So all of a sudden, this thing becomes a lot more real for a person. Right. How can someone not let this go to waste? Like, I guess not an opportunity, but like relationship go to waste. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. How can sex not go to waste in a situation like this? Because Rudy might think sex of sex as only one thing, right? As only one aspect of things. And there's also concepts of shame, and we'll go we'll go into that in case it goes in the negative rate. He's stopping and questioning himself a lot right now. Yeah, well, I'm I'm sure anyone would, right? There's a really cute person that draws your attention, and they're like, "Hey, why don't we go to bed or whatever." Alcohol is great for blood flow. Oh no! Rather than just get into her head, maybe uh, they they sh should talk about it beforehand. Right? Is feeling guilty after masturbation common? Uh, I mean, that's a concept of shame. You need to talk to yourself about. Go to a therapist for that one, brother. I'm not even gonna lie because uh, any feelings of guilt usually is a concept of core schema of shame that comes after a big event like that. And I think that you might have some things you might need to process because that's that's pretty big. Unless it was like a cultural religious thing, for the most part, like that that comes into a core concept of shame. There, uh, how should a partner is Sarah go from this? That's what I'm I'm curious about because personally, for me, right, I'm I'm I'm, I'm only gonna vouch for me. In case you guys don't know, I'm gonna be straight up about it. I had a really severely like trigger warning, I'm, I'm gonna be a trigger warning. We, 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 we mentioned them as like Cool Ranch in here, right? Cool Ranch Doritos. But I had a really severely bad breakup a long, long time ago. Um, to the point where I, you know, during that time period, I was barely going for my bachelor's degree. You know, I almost self harmed, we'll put it that way. Uh, and it completely, fundamentally changed me, it broke me in a big way. It broke me to the point where I was like, I can relate to Rudy in this way. I was depressed for a long, long time. And literally like um, my weight started skyrocketing and I, I was never really stable from weighing like 160, 170. I would skyrocket up and down and up and down because depression takes a toll on the body. Uh, I would go out and try and make connections or not even go out. It took me forever to even like actually be able to properly start taking care of myself and properly start being able to go to do certain things. Right. So when it came to instances of sex, it became pretty difficult as well once it started to heal, right? Why? Because all of a sudden that trauma was still in the brain. That trauma, I was still processing events that happened. I was still self-doubting the insecure aspects, the, oh, you know, especially after you've been cheated on or whatever. It can absolutely devastate a person if you're not like mentally prepared for something like that. So when we're processing something like this, what would it mean for a person, right, who got really, really attached to have that rupture and all of a sudden be presented another opportunity to start socializing and getting back on his feet again. It might be really fucking difficult. 
And in a situation like this, and luckily I got I got really into psychology. I got really into sexology, psychology, attachment, uh, theory, humanistic, psychodynamics, all the, essentially everything. This is why I'm a psychologist now. But as I was going through, one of the key aspects that always came through, especially like in bachelor's, master's, doctoral, so on and so forth, is sex. And I'm, I'm going to throw this out there as, as a way for a question for you guys, right? Is sex your pleasure or your partner's pleasure? What do you focus on? Are you, what, what is your love language? If I, were to, if I were to talk to you, are you okay with your partner feeling good and you not necessarily feeling the best? Like, i.e. you're okay if you don't finish. Yeah, and this is this is a general like genuine question. Or do you need to finish and you're okay if your partner doesn't? Ideally, right? In an ideal world, it would be both, but not it's not always ideal, right? Uh, there there's hundreds of studies out there where a majority of time partners don't finish. It, and a majority of females, like I think it was I, I got to look it up. I'll look it up in NCBI in a bit. A majority of females fake orgasms for their partner in order to build up their esteem. And a lot of people hate, hate having this conversation about sex. A lot of people still view sex as like a very hush, hush type thing when it shouldn't be. You should be talking about to your partner about things. You should be talking to your partner about toys, about what they like. Do they like when you eat them out? Do they like when you do certain things? What do your partners like? And what do you like out of it? Right. Do you like when your partner does a certain thing, when they do another thing? Does it suck when they do this? It's a conversation that needs to happen, right? And also foreplay is important, you know, uh, extremely important. We're going to go ahead and highlight this like a thousand percent. Like if there's one lesson you take away from this, there's one lesson you take away from this. Foreplay is really, really, really important. Communication is key, and foreplay is important, ladies and gentlemen. If there's one thing I learned from anime, is that communication is important. Communication is huge. Communication is absolutely huge, and sadly, a lot of people don't do it. And this is why I'm talking. I'm thinking about it. Right? Is like before they get into any action, at least for Rudius' sake, I, w I I would hope that this is something that they would talk about. Otherwise, this is going to end horribly. You know. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> oh no. Hey yo. Hey yo, wait, hold on. No, Rudy. Rudy. Rudy, no. Rudy, take take a step back, brother. <laughs> take all it took was her just patting the bed and you're like, here I go. <laughs> Rudy, here I go. <laughs> bro, bro, okay. Anosa. あの時あんたが来てくれなかったら死んでたし。だからその。え、よ。いいよ。No、no、no。Don't Hold on. You <laughs> Sarah, you did not oh god. Hold on. Sarah, Sarah, let, let's talk about that, right? You saved me, so go ahead. Sarah. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Sarah. No. 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 No, oh, no. Like you saved it's like chat. You saved me, so go ahead. I'm still wearing this Twitch. I'm still wearing it. <laughs> oh, no. Like, dude.
Hey, yo. No communication whatsoever. Rudy just Rudy just goes into the mount position here. Take off her shirt. That's going to cost her minus three deductions here. <laughs> hey, yo. Rudy. Rudy, brother. That pause. Rudy. Rudy. If you're already questioning it, maybe not. I'm 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 gonna make something really fucking clear with you guys. If you're questioning what like what to do next, or if you're like literally on top and you're not feeling it, stop. If your partner says no at any time, stop. Right? If I'm I'm just I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this because at the end of the day, there has to be aspects of like, you know, people coming into that realization as well. Because if you don't, you're probably both like, you know, when when it comes to this and he's questioning himself and he's on top and he takes his shirt off, like it takes him a couple seconds to be like, Are they? like what do I do? Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, bro. What? Rudy is noticing. Oh, no, Rudy. Rudy, you're hurt, dude. You're hurt. You think... Oh, Rudy. He Okay, I, I'm going to describe it right. Rudy just, like, touched his crotch to see if he was hard. He's not. For me, this is uh, yeah. Trauma is sto trauma is stored in the balls, right? <laughs> no, but tra trauma is literally stored in the body. And seven eighteen, we're not there yet. We're 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 a couple minutes away, and and I think that's a that's a big moment that like a lot of people. No, I, I have it off because it might be TLS, you know. And that's that. This is why I'm highlighting this. Is like. If this happens, if this happens to you, you know, have a communication with your partner. If you still like them, you still like, you know what? I still feel this because you can still feel a desire, right? You can absolutely still feel a desire to have sex, but you might not be, you know, hard or ready for anything like that. You can focus on pleasing your partner. There comes a lot of benefits from that as well, where it's like you might still feel the want to have sex, but not be like hard or not be like a thousand percent like into yourself in that moment right where you're like you know what like i just want to make my partner feel good but that has to come from a moment of you wanting that and it not being an expectation or an obligation i feel worse for honestly you have no idea how long i've been waiting for you to see this and analyze this because it's huge man like this is such a such a key area of importance that i feel like it might often go it might often go unnoticed or it might often go, you know, like over Zoom. A lot of people might look at this and be like, oh, really is it so stupid? It's like a lot of people suffer through this, guys. A lot of people genuinely have sexual dysfunctions, trauma. And at some point in your life, I hate to put it this way, if you're a guy and you like to drink alcohol, uh, you more than likely... Or like, especially with whiskey and a lot of other stuff, it affects sexual performance as well. As you get older, it gets harder to perform, you know. But this is this is why I'm throwing it out there is there are other ways to please a partner. And just because like people that would point and shame Rudy for something like this, are you better than the bullies that would have done this to Earthius? Would you do this to a person? And these are concepts that I'm that I'm that I'm I, I'm genuinely bringing up for discussion. Yeah, I, I and I, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up. Is if you point at Rudy and you don't realize the fact that like I can't imagine making fun of this, 
oh, there there probably is someone out there that like is making fun of it or someone that being like, oh, Rudy can't get hard, softy is, or some stupid shit like that, right? The fact that he was called the Oh yeah. E- exactly, exactly, Pizza Picante. I gotta say, while Rudy took the lead here, specifically this was pushed on him by her. Uh in a way, he she only verbalized it. He's the one that took the, the physical action. We have to remember that. There's people in here doing it, Ed. So th- this this is why I'm bringing it up, right? Is we have to be careful with the words that we use because at a point, I think like the I I, I think if we're gonna be if we're gonna be completely honest here, if we make fun of Rudy as for this, right? Are we better than the bullies that made fun of him for his penis? That's right. I'm bringing that up. In previous episodes, we saw Earthius tied up and all the bullies were po- poking fun at his penis and making fun of it because they had him tied up naked and they were making fun of it. Oh, and chat goes silent. <laughs> and chat goes silent for a second there. <laughs> I have already seen one super making fun of yeah. Like, yeah, it and and that's exactly that's exactly why I, I would never make some fun of someone for that. No. Because this is a very serious thing that happens to a lot of people. Uh it's a big moment of reflection. It is. It is. And, and through that, I, I am gonna question it, right? For because there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there. I'm sure emoji reactors to 101 other people that would be like, and like you know, or like <laughs> and like pointing at the at, uh, like Rudius's crotch or whatever. It's like, what are you propagating? Are you, are, in a way, are you trying to go ahead and point out like, are you making fun of Rudius in that sense? Are you like, because my thing is the way that I'm looking at sex and the way that it's being used in here. I'm just going to be straight up about it. The way that sex is used in Moshko Tensei is so impactful because it's not just sex is being used for procreation. Sex is being used as a form of reflection. Sex is being used as a way to teach something. Sex is being used just for pleasure at times. Sex is being used that sex is being used in 101 different ways, right? And this is what I love about the way that the author approached this. The author approached this as a form that like, for example, they did not have to introduce with Rudy as not being able to go ahead and like, get hard or perform or whatever sex can be can be used as a cover-up as a defense mechanism sex is a part of life and we we all use it in many ways shapes or sizes but i feel like this might be a big changing moment for rudius anytime that sex is introduced for a character it is a big gravitas or a changing moment for the characters at hand that's why i'm highlighting this this is why i'm bringing this up and i'm sorry if this made chat go a little bit quiet but I'm just highlighting it in, in, in the importance of this, where it, it's, yeah. Yeah. I honestly feel bad for both of them because, number one, how would you heal from this? He needs to understand that it takes time. He needs someone that he, like, for example, with Sarah, he might need some, some like, an intimate, commit, like, not committed, but compassionate relationship where he's gotten to know someone, where he feels safe with someone, where he feels at home with someone, where someone just hugs him and tells him, it's okay, I'm here for you, for him to literally start getting hard. I'm just going to be straight up about it. He needs someone that he can trust, that he can be open, that he can be vulnerable with. He needs someone that can hug him and tell him it's okay to cry, it's okay to be there. Can Sarah be that person for him right now? No. Because Sarah just approached it in the way thinking that he is okay. He isn't like, you know, he's he's a-okay. The way a majority of us would approach someone that we think is hot. We would think that they're okay and that they don't have a lot of issues, right? Something he could absolutely trust him. Yeah. So that's why it's it, it's huge. What? <laughs> Oh, bro. Bro, you talk it out. You talk it out, brother. Oh, 
なんでだどうしてだいつからだ Man. And are you sure? No, the story jester. Any chapters that we've read, we read on here.、Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like, I, I don't have time to read ahead. I, like, I really don't. Like, in case you ever look at my schedule, I'm always, always going through something. Like, always doing something. So I really don't have time. If I read something, I always state it. Or if I've seen a, a, an anime or something, I always state it beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, wouldn't that trigger fight or flight for you? I read Moshka Tensei after a bad breakup, so this hit hard. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't this, this trigger fight or flight for you, especially if you weren't ready or aware of it? And I even question, for example, I'm going to question this. Was Rudy masturbating throughout this entire time? Not as a way to be like, ooh, it's a creepy question, but quite literally through a sexual psychological perspective. He's in those years. Was he able to go ahead and do the do with himself in that aspect? Or, if we're going to be realistic about it, Oh god, that's a crappy triangle. Is this a better triangle? It's a better triangle. Because if he wasn't, where is he at? What is missing for him? Let's talk about it. What is he missing? He's literally at the base of the triangle. Yeah, let's be honest. The sex right here. Why do you feel uncomfortable? Oh, man, sorry. He's questioning how long he has been like this. So, my guess is he has not been. Because a good, like, why do you guys think we do that, first of all, right? Aside from releasing and, you know, like the literal aspects of like what happens in our brain when it's re releasing all of this love, hormones, and、uh, helping us feel good, it's also a check for sexual health. Whenever we do something like that, whenever, you know, masturbation comes into play, it's also a self check for. Physical health and sexual health, right? Are you able to get hard? Are you able to do certain things? It is quite literally、uh, what are people who don't beat it due to the religious reasons constantly at the bottom of the pyramid? I mean, if people that don't do it, right, they might have some difficulties later on when it comes, like, essentially, it becomes harder to go up the pyramid when you don't have the bottom period, like pyramid met. You can have some stuff missing, right? And you can still advance up to the points in the triangle, but it, it makes it insanely hard. To reach self actualization. So, when we're looking at this, sex is a physiological need. If that's affected, what would that affect? That's probably going to affect your self esteem, your confidence.、Uh, there's aspects of shame that come into place.、Uh, this might affect your sexual intimacy, it might affect your friendship with Sarah, right? Or this family of counter arrow might be affected, which might include the way that you go ahead and, I don't know. Do stuff with them because if Sarah doesn't, you know, if Sarah starts feeling ashamed or, you know, or Sarah feels like, oh, you didn't want her, whatever, all of a sudden that might affect employment opportunities, which might affect the way that you find resources around you, which might affect your morality, your general、uh, outview on things. And of course, the family,、uh, your own health is already affected because sex is affected inside of that. And for property, we don't know. This bottom part of the triangle is so fucking important. It is crucial. It is fucking crucial to have. And a good therapist, a good psychologist will be checking to make sure that you have this. Why? Because in therapy, we're trying to get you to self actualize. We're trying to get you to this part of the triangle on the very, very top. But if we're looking all the way down here at the physiological needs, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, hmm. Hmm. That's all I can say is, oh, oh, is it? Not just a fear of a traumatic event he had with e r i s that affected him this way. So it's basically a self defense mechanism. It can be a self defense mechanism, absolutely.、Uh, trauma, trauma affects your body in many different ways, right?、Uh, and it also highlights aspects that we may not be ready for. He's got a cornata. Okashi daro, so na. Ima wade anna ni kikan bo da tano ni. Iki nari konna. Ore no karada wa do na te shimatta no da ro ka. So, as much as we talked previously about talk with your partner, whatever, I have to remember he's a teenager. Of course, he's not going to go ahead and he's thinking, like, 
this is a devastating blow. This is this is a major like a devastating blow as a teenager. Let's be real. Let's be absolutely real. This, if if this happened to you as a teenager, what what would you do? Panic. Fuck, this has never happened to me before. Holy shit. Uh da 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 da. All of these things start coming into mind. Am, am I good enough? What is going on? This is the only character I've seen having this problem. I mean, I don't... For example, would I expect Subaru from ReZero to have this problem? Realistically, yes. I don't know if he does. But I'm just saying, realistically, I would expect this issue to start happening in individuals uh, with extreme trauma, with some form of PTSD and aspects like this. So, is this a show that's actually tackling a very real problem, realistically speaking? Yeah, it is. It is. Definitely have a lot of do yeah, doom and gloom thoughts, exactly. And she got dressed, bro. She got dressed and she's dipping. Oh, you made her feel like she's worthless, dude. Like you couldn't get hard for her, dude. You made her feel like you know, in that moment of insecurity, in that moment where all these thoughts came rushing in. The worst thing that you can do now, like, first off, you have to talk to her about this, right? The worst thing that you can do is literally go out and drink, dude. You need to fucking stay the night, think about it, or, like, take time for yourself and literally chill. Because in situations like this, the first thing that comes is run. I got to run. I got to job my problems away. I got to go do something. So you got to literally fucking chill. Think about your actions and whatnot because or think about the way that you're going to communicate this with her. Because my my number one thing is looking at this, right? She's like, I'm not really into you or anything. That would hurt. That that would really, really fucking hurt. Before we continue, what do you think Rudy will do? He's a kid. He's in shock. He's hurt. He's been drinking. What do a lot of people do? It, it hurts that Sarah doesn't understand. How can Sarah understand J J Dog? How can Sarah understand if he hasn't opened up about it? Would you understand if you're with the partner and all of a sudden, like, they're just like, no, nope, 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 nope. And this is your first time with them? Or would that hurt? How can she understand? Yeah, there's been no communication. Why do you think this is the worst thing he could do? Because a lot of people like to drown away their sorrows and make stupid ass mistakes. Uh, I remember, for example, I'll open up about this. I, I, I had a friend in Amsterdam, not Brady, but I had another friend in Amsterdam who was going through a really, really bad breakup. And I remember I met him at a bar because essentially he was having difficulties. Uh, I wanted to say breakup. It was like right before they broke up. Uh, and the, this is the reason why they broke up. I'm just going to be straight up about it. I'm not calling you out, bro. I'm not calling you out, but I fucking told you. I fucking told you, bro. <laughs> I'm just going to be 100% straight up about it. Uh, in case you're watching this, dude. We were all drinking and stuff. And he was telling me that they have been having a little bit of difficulties. Or he's been having a little bit of difficulties in his relationship, right? In terms of sexual performance and so on and so forth. And... He's not a psychologist, by the way. It was just like he, he he's like an actual like other person. Essentially went to another university. We just became friends from theater and stuff. Um anyway, we were we were talking, we were having a big conversation, and I was like, dude, well, you have to communicate what you want, right? You have to communicate your desires. You have to communicate yeah, you have to communicate what you're open for and what you like and so on and so forth. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, dude, well, go go home and go do that. And he's like, but I got I, I, I want to I go do something. Clearly, stuff is not doing well. What do you think he went and did? What do you think he went and did? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go throw this out there. Why do you think situations can get bad? Because he keeps drinking. Oh, cute girl is flirting with me. Oh, okay. Oh, it's two in the morning. Let me make a Snapchat story about me walking, uh, you know, around the red light district. Oh, wait. People calling me out to not do stuff like this. Because the recording's not allowed there. Not the Snapchat. Yeah. 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 
So th- this is why I'm bringing up aspects like this and I'm bringing it in, in stuff like this is careful in a major breakup. If you're having relationship troubles, communicate with your partner, be open to conversations with your partner, be like literally be open to having some deep conversations with your partner, be open to literally sitting down and having an uncomfortable. It's, it's uncomfortable. It is. I'm not going to lie to you because I've had it more. I'm like, how can I be better for you? What can, for example, what do you like? What do you dislike? Uh, so on and so forth. You have to be open to having these conversations. We're still friends to this day. It was just, uh, like, as, I, as, as we talk about it, a very fucking stupid mistake. A really fucking, like, stupid, stupid mistake. Or alcohol does not excuse his actions, right? Anyway, 817 to 833. Is your friend happy now? Yeah, he's in a relationship. I think he's married now and everything. Like, yep, 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 yep. Way to add shame into this. Holy fuck, dude. I know Sarah, this is a response mechanism, right? Because Sarah was starting to go ahead and be open. Sarah was starting to open up to Rudius about so many things. Sarah was starting, oh yeah, this is a, this is a defense mechanism. I'm just going to be straight up with you. This is literally a defense mechanism because Sarah does not want to feel this amount of pain. This is, this is an, yeah. I'm basically doing this out of obligation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both in very, very... You sure this isn't an offensive... No, this is a defense mechanism. TLC, if this happened to you, right? All of a sudden, guess what? You're hurt. You're hurt. Like, she was ready to be open and vulnerable, and she's been planning all of these things with them and so on and so forth, and now she feels rejected. And when you feel rejected, what do you do? Right? This is your defense mechanism that pops up. All of a sudden, you're like, well, I never really wanted to be with you. This is out of obligation, right? Because she's trying to justify these actions for herself and then for him. So that way, yeah, it's just one giant misunderstanding. But this is this is how you protect your self-esteem. She's trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's protecting her self-esteem by, do, by saying this. <laughs> yeah, that's like calling a girl a B when she rejects you. Some people do that. It's a defense mechanism that people throw up in order to go ahead and, like, protect themselves. Yeah. Natalie protecting the soon that is. Wait, where's Natalie? Where's where the fuck's Natalie? Natalie, Natalia, Natalia, where are you at, Natalie? Oh, there you are. Sarah did nothing wrong. No, Sarah absolutely did not do something wrong. Thanks so much for the sub, man. I appreciate it, Metal Onion. What a badass name, first off. But yeah, this is why why I'm highlighting this is like this is not like like her fault, his fault type of thing. This is quite literally like a giant misunderstanding that happens when people don't communicate during sex. If I freeze up during sex or if I'm like, holy shit, like I really want to please you, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just not like super duper hard today or whatever. I'd be like, yo, what can I do to make you feel good? Hey, yo, what about like you could do 101 things, but you have to be open to communicating. From what I see, both are hurting now. Absolutely, Lena. Both are hurting and, and the, again, miscommunication and aspects of not being healed and rushing into things. Yep. 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 Let me put these on right. I always fuck this up, dude. You have no idea how much time I spent earlier trying to get that idea across to people getting mad at calling Sarah an asshole. Sarah is not an asshole. Oh, no. The thing is, a lot of people empathize with Rudy. Like, I, I empathize with Rudy a lot. However, we also have to empathize with Sarah and understand that if you are in Sarah's shoes, would you be happy? Or would you be hurt? I would be hurt. If I was in Sarah's shoes, I would be hurt. I I, I would feel like, is it me? Am, is it me? Am I not hot enough? Am I not good enough? Like, for Rudy? Like, I'm over here. I've given all these signs. I've been here, you know... I, I think I look decent, like, you know, he saved me, and we've been planning all of these things. Am I not good enough for him? These thoughts would start rushing through, right? Or it's like, wow, I can't even make him hard and because of miscommunication. It starts coming through, and it, it becomes an issue, man. For her to comfort Rudy in this situation requires a level of confidence. First-timers realistically... Exactly, Alto Guy. A lot of people will never realistically 
Yeah, and she's a teen. Exactly, Lana. A lot of people realistically would never have. So how would I heal Rudius? If I was, say, if I was in Sarah's shoes, if I was in Sarah's shoes, what would I do that could best help Rudy? Just give him a hug. He's scared. He's terrified. What he needs is a place to feel like home. I feel like he needs that connection with someone to feel comfortable with to be able to go ahead and perform, to be able to go ahead and be there. And also understand that this happens to people, that sexual dysfunction is a very, very real thing. That, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, that sexual dysfunction is a very, very, very real thing. That, uh, you know... It's okay to not always be there and, you know, not always be ready for stuff and just have a, a deep conversation. If I was on Rudy issue, shoe, let's flip that. What would I do? I would, I would be like, Sarah, we need to talk. Right? Like, I wouldn't, I, I, I would like get my clothes, go after her and be like, look, I think this is why. And I hope you could, like, I, I, I know that this doesn't like save anything or whatever, but like, I think this is why. What happened was, explain the story. Why? Because now it's not just about sex. Now it's about vulnerability and using I statements. I feel as though the reason why I'm like this happened was because of this. Because guess what? No one can invalidate your feelings. You can't be wrong about the way you feel. And this is why a good psychologist will always tell you to use I statements. I feel as though I'm unappreciated or I feel as though I'm not performing because of what happened in my past relationship, you know. I mean, now there are there are there's a lot of people, a lot of people that use I statements, but like in a situation like this, that's the key thing. Pizza picante is would they heal or would would people be able to realistically do this? Probably not. Probably not. Let's be honest. A lot of people don't need. A lot of adults don't even communicate. So fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Fuck, dude. I mean, it's not showing any... It, it's booty. It's booty. It's booty. It is what it is. No. 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 <laughs> No, no, Rudy, 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 help, help, help. Are you that? Wee woo, wee woo, I am not liking this. Wee woo, wee woo, <laughs> wee woo, SpongeBob, wee woo. <laughs> no, this is terrifying. Oh, God, the generational trauma. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, drinking never helps. Nope. 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 Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> nope. 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 It's sold at. What the fuck is he gonna do? <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Oh god, dude. Let Soldat cook? No. No. Oh, <笑><笑><笑> Fuck, dude, Rudy has let the Paul come out of him for a second. Holy shit. Th that Paul reflex, bro. <laughs> he was... Dude, yeah, it, it, that was just... Uh, ooh, ooh. I mean, honestly, why do I feel like Soldat's going to actually like this, though? Soldat's going to be like, all right, we're friends now. That's what I wanted to fucking see. I wanted to see you let your out, like let your inner emotions out. Fuck yeah, I can work with this. You're this. This is what I wanted to see. Yeah, finally. Oh, thanks so much for the follow, dude. I appreciate it, pilot. Thanks so much. 
何怒ってんだよいつも喧嘩ってきやがってこれが望みだったんだろうがお前ヘラヘラしてて何がおかしいんだよお前みたいに他人をけなしてバカにして自分の成果を自慢してそんで恨まれて嫉妬して嫌われてみんなが離れていってそれでも同じ態度でいられるなら俺だってそうしてる Yeah, yeah. You let out a lot of your frustrations. Yeah, Rudy is wonderful here. Rudy is a fucking beast. But let's be honest. Let, let's be honest. We let out a lot of our frustrations like this. Like, people. And, and, and let's talk about it. Because for me, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I'm not going to lie to you. I am kind of fucking ter- scared of how this might go for him. What is this? Chat. What is it? What is he doing? Fear of abandoning me. Yeah. This is displacement. He's satisfying an impulse with the substitute object. He's mad, so he's punching the fuck out of Soldat. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's mad. So what does he do? He, he's, he's like, fuck it. I'm letting all of this out on you because Soldat. Fuck you, because you're here or whatnot. Soldat understands this. Soldat fears, feels and understands all of this and is like, like you know, like taking the punches and stuff. Because he can stop this at any moment. I'm pretty sure he can. However, this is his true feelings. This is Rudy as his true form. This is Rudy as not masking. And he's afraid of dri- like driving other people away, right? Why? Because right now he has an anxious attachment system. He's avoidant. He's dependent, right? He strongly fears rejection. He has low self-esteem. He has high anxiety in the relationships that are dating here. He's he's acting out when he's triggered, right? He struggles communicating his needs. This is this is what it is. He has an anxious avoidant uh, attachment here, like fearful. If we're gonna be if we're gonna be honest with it, this is what it is. Rudius, from being like a little bit anxious, has now fully developed into a morbid attachment style here, where he's afraid that people are going to leave him, and he's also anxious and he can't communicate his needs clearly. Yeah, th- this is Teen Rudy. This is Teen Rudy. Now, what is this? Like, we're, let's 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 jump straight into it as well. Fuck it, we're here. What does this mean? Not the best fucking thing out here. He's teens. Identity versus role confusion. Teen needs to develop a new sense of self and personal identity. Success leads to an ability to stay true to yourself, while failure leads to role confusion and a weak sense of self. Young adulthood as well, because it impacts the other one. Young adults need to form intimate, loving relationships with other people. Success leads to strong relationships. Failure results in loneliness and isolation. And what does he fear? He strongly fears rejection and all of this stuff. This is all just coming straight into play. And and this sucks. It sucks. It, it really does. Like, for someone to, to be this hurt, for someone to feel all of this, I, I can only empathize. I can't even imagine the amount of, like, frustration and rage and all of that that is coming, guys. That is absolutely fucking wild. God damn. Oh, no, nice, nice. Man, I'm so excited. I am so excited for what may come. Uh, we told you it was going to be a long one. Yeah, but I didn't expect this to, like, have this much juice and spiciness. I, wait, 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 wait. Is this why Espy and Nat were, like... Is this why Espy and Nat were up playing this episode? Like, I can't wait for episode three. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys. Oh, dude. How was this for them? I'm so fucking curious now. You're not even halfway through. Yes. 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 That is why. Nah, I love you. Nah, I think you're wonderful, dude. Uh, yes. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. Told you so. Dude, that's. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like, holy shit. Uh, this is the ED. Uh, Dude, it sucks. Okay, Spiffy, let, let me tell you why. Because you guys t- keep typing in Ed, like E-D, and I keep thinking that you guys are referring to me. So I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the Ed episode. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? But our stream was only three hours, and we spent a lot of it talking about random stuff. <laughs> oh, Natalie. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's the pun. We are. It's on purpose. 
It also refers to emotional damage. Oh, no. <laughs> guys, you guys are rough. You guys are rough. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go. Let's go straight into it. Let's see. We're, we're going to back it up 30 seconds and continue on from there. Uh, like 914, somewhere around there. You guys already heard this audio here. Here it is again. え、してて何が <laughs> 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 The parallels in this are, are amazing. The parallels in this are amazing. So it, the parallels in this are amazing. How did Rudy heal when he met Paul? With the Paul reunion, yes. Yes. The parallels in this are amazing. Like... Le legitimately, uh, and, and by confronting him by like the whole punching scenario and everything that came through, and so they both were able to go ahead and make up and heal and then go from there and establish their relationship forward. They fought and they made up. Yep, yep. And and, and the voice actress, just, voice actress or actor is just fucking killing it. Like, hmm. <laughs> てくれよ。嘘でもいいから笑ってくれよ。あんなやり方されると辛いんだよ。おい、ダメだ。俺はもう終わりだ。ああ。くしょ。かかってこいよ。殴れよ。そう。そうだ。そうだ。It's like this isn't about me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sold that right now, though. Sold that like after taking a couple of hits. This was never about me, Rudy. <laughs> I think this is more about you. Like, Sold that's over here just fucking taking hits, and he's just like, I would realize that almost immediately. Like, <laughs> oh, dude. Sold that's on another level, dude. Uh, Sold that's just straight up on another. We need to talk about it. <laughs> My inner girl issues are tingling. <laughs> oh, dude. Boy, Zoro, I'm not going to be a Oh. He's even like, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't planning on. I, I wasn't planning on hurting you. Um, there's a <laughs> sold has a said that oh, oh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. As cool as that was from Soldat. Soldat. I saw some people. Actually, I might make a big Twitter post about this. I saw some people calling Soldat a bully. I legit saw some people calling Soldat a bully. Let me tell you this. Soldat is not a bully. Soldat is very straight up. Soldat is, is like... He wants to address some things and he addresses them. There's a difference between being a bully, right? Or someone is making your, your life uncomfortable. Uh, and someone legitimately, like, bullying comes into the point where it's a repetitive action of a series of emotional and or physical abuse, right? 
There's a difference between someone calling you out on your shit and being like, dude, we can all see that you're wearing a mask and whatnot and walking away versus someone doing this every single day, pushing you around and doing certain things, right? The soul bro is just Ed self insert. Soul dad is a bro we don't want, but we need. Soul bro just has no filter. Well, no, it's like, it's not just you, Walking Dead. It's a lot of other people as well that, like, were like, oh, yeah, Sildat is a bully. How can anyone, like, like him or whatnot? There's a lot of people, and, and I, I'm going to I'm gonna highlight this. Would you rather want someone that calls you out for your bullshit or someone that just kisses your ass all the time and wears a mask and you know it's a mask? For the most part, a lot of people would prefer someone that's able to go ahead and be up front and be honest and so on and so forth, right? He says the stuff you need to hear, yeah? Soul is that person who you, uh, who slaps you into reality. Yeah, yeah. A guy can be both a bro and a bully. It's one or the other, because if you're, if you're considering someone a brother, then that means that they have your trust and respect and that they don't do bad stuff to you. If you're calling them a bully, that means that they violate your boundaries and therefore you feel uncomfortable and you can't trust a bully. So... If you're somewhere in between, then all of a sudden that's more of, of a, I don't know how to put it, like a, a dissonant relationship inside of it where you're like, you might be, you might see them as a brother because they have some aspects in there, but you know, he, he's a good guy. He's probably have been screwed by someone who wears a mask. Probably, probably. I mean, we all have our defense mechanisms. I'm scared for Rudy because him opening up to Soldat like this, Soldat looks like a younger Paul. So, I, I don't know where this is going to go, man. I'm scared. Wait, 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 wait. How did he say it? <laughs> so that, bro, you did... Uh, uh. <laughs> We do need a Paul emoji. I fucking love Soul Dad. That's, that's me with a lot of the young therapists that are coming in. Why the fuck are you using... Like, straight up, dude. I, I like... Oh. There are a lot of people that like to try and hide behind the their very verbose words. And they're like, well, actually, if we're looking at the comorbidity symptoms uh, between, like, you know, the the diagnostic statistical manual uh, number five. And it's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Just say it's a DSM-5 and, and talk about it in normal terms. Like, I, what the fuck are you on about, dude? Like, you don't have to go and be so highbrow about everything and try and, like, go all the way around. Just be yourself. Be open. Be honest. You're not going to be in trouble for being yourself. Um, Actually, when we're looking at, at the way that this is described, and it's like, no, bro, like, chill. Be yourself. Be open about it. <laughs> Talk to me in your words. Ore instead of Boku. Is Boku more formal than Ore? Is that why? Or anyway. え、ほう。<笑><笑> <laughs> oh, my boy needs a hug. My boy needs a hug. Is this the first time he's told this story? Is this the first time he's told this story? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. All of those feelings that probably came up out of this. Ah. Yeah, here's the thing, I, and I know this is going to sound silly, this is going to sound fucking weird. When you ever go through a really, really bad breakup, tell your story. Tell it a hundred fucking times. Tell it a thousand fucking times. Why? Because every single time you tell the story, it impacts you less. So tell, the, tell your story as many times as you need to tell it. It is a form of healing. 
it is a major form of healing to to literally share your story to be open about like you know what happened and why that happened uh a good way that i usually initiate like a like a conversation a session or whatnot is like you know a lot of people expect so how does that make you feel what are you feeling and i tell people so tell me your story and like we usually get like psychologists and whatnot especially when being referred to an agency we get a bunch of paperwork that has like what they think your diagnosis is like other companies your referral agency uh so on so forth like what information you gave them i put all of this to the side i don't look at it i have it there but i put it to the side and i tell a person these are just papers like these are papers that anyone could have written anything on and they're assuming for it to be true what is your story? For a lot of people, that is liberating. For a lot of people, it is liberating to have someone ask what their story is and not go off of the immediate. So question number one, blah, 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 right? Because I'm going to get the information that you're telling me based on the story that you share. And if there's something missing, I might ask for their information, but I'm not going to have that in front of me and be like, let's look at this. You know, it's like, so tell me your story. What happened? What was going on? Huge, man. Huge. People heal by, by telling their story, and this is... Yeah, yeah. Some people might. <laughs> でもどうやって。わからねえ。でもよ。原因がそれならそれで上書きするしかねえんじゃねえか。ブラ。つまり。プロに任せてみようぜ。No, so that ass back, dude, because I'm terrified. What are you going to do, dude? It's Jover. <laughs> All right. I have a feeling. I have a feeling so that is about to do something that is not necessarily the best. If, if you guys agree with so that's decision, drop a kick W. If you guys think that Soldat is about to make a really good decision, drop a kick W. If you guys feel like Soldat is about to make a bad decision, Drop a Dorito. Paul would have done the same thing, bro. We all know it. Oh. 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 Everyone dropping a keck W. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. There's Okay, some people with Doritos. I know, Soldat. Soldat is trying to, try, like, trying to mean well, but I'm afraid that my dude is just going to go up and try and pick up a bunch of women. Or some stupid shit like this in an environment where my man hasn't healed yet. And he's thinking sex will heal sex trauma. But uh, it can make it worse. And in fact, how would it feel? And say that, like, I can't perform and Nat's there. And Nat's like, you know, uh, I'm ashamed of you. And I'm like, man, Nick, uh, this, this and this happens. Nick's like, hey, why don't you go out out of the town with me? Leave it to a pro. And Nick's walking around, right? And he's like, bro, I got you someone. Here's someone that you can see. SB. And then, like all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, SB and Ed sitting on a tree, right? Uh, and shit can just get really, really fucking bad, really toxic. Especially if, like, say we're here, uh, cough me or any of the mods walk by and they see me and SB together and they know Nat and they're like, Nat, you'll never guess. We saw SB and Ed together, right? Shit can get really, really fucking bad. He's working us into the example again. Nat, you know I am. You fucking know I am. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up, dude? What's up? Oh, no. It's the ongoing fan fanfic. Nat, Nat, are, are we doing a fanfic where we all got isekai into a world and we all must survive together or something? Or well, what's going on with this fanfic, right? I almost spat my soda. Holy fuck. <laughs> I almost spat my soda. I had to turn away because this is a really good mic. Holy fuck, no. 
<laughs> Are we in the red light district? <laughs> Are we in the red light district here? That was almost perfect timing. Oh, dude. No. <laughs> Hey yo! Sorry, hold on. I gotta back it up just, just, just. I gotta back it up just a little bit here. Hold on. I ha I have a type. In case you guys don't know, I I usually have a type of like. <laughs> I have a type of waifu that I go for. Usually a red hair, uh, you know. Uh, does she look like someone? Oh, you're right. She does look like hers. Sorry, I was just going after my type here, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I was just, I'm over here outing my type and shit, dude. Like, sorry, brother. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, professionals here, right? Are you Rudy Ed? No, bro. I'm just saying. Oh no. And her name even sounds very similar. Eris Elise. Eris Elise. Oh, dude. Isn't the L like. I'm a blonde eye around. Don't worry. I, I love all types. I love everyone, Natalie. Don't worry. Don't worry. And also, isn't the L kind of pronounced like an R at times as well? It was on purpose as well. Red hair. Oh, dude. Pelirroja y nombre parecido, sí, de a tiro. But this is, the universe is sending him signals. Ah, oh. actually, I'm kind of curious. Has, has someone ever not dated you because you weren't a specific type? Like, you weren't, like, uh, blonde or blue-eyed or so on and so forth? Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm actually kind of curious now. I'll take for obvious reasons. I still pronounce R. Eris. Oh, shit. Erisu. It. Me, no. Uh, it happens. For some people, it happens. For some people, it's. Dijiste triste para no. Entienden la ñ. Hey. No, Ed, I'm just continu uh, unconventionally unattractive. Or unconventionally attractive. Dude, if you're, if you're attractive, hey, good for you. Once I had a Puerto Rican tell me she would go out with me, except for the fact that I'm Dominican. Still salty about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had people literally be like, I'm going to be straight up. Don't hold it against me, guys. When I was abroad, I had, I had someone be like, yeah, sorry, I don't date Americans. And instantly I'm like, oh, no problem. Uh, uh, yo soy mexicano. <laughs> I'm like, I'll switch nationalities. I'm like, I don't mind. I'm like, no problem, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like technically, 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 technically. <laughs> no problema, no hay ningún problema. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can fix. <laughs> we can fix that. Yep. Oh, dude. It's so it was so good. You activated my trap card. Oh. <laughs> ルーデオス様、よろしくお願いします。ブロー。お名前は以前より聞き及んでおります。ああ、まあ、はい。やっぱり他の冒険者の方から聞いた感じですか。いいえ。妹より以前無償で中間でつをして。Wait, is that the sister that was hurt on the outside type thing? Right? Like the sister that he healed with the with the little kid and stuff? Oh shit. Okay. Okay, yeah, that that makes yeah, when he was melting the snow, exactly. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
素晴らしいお方に抱かれてしまったら他の娼婦に妬まれてしまいますねいやもう一杯いいですかはいどうぞ夜は長いのですから私の方もお楽しみになっていやもちろんですはいあなたは準備できます Or if he does come out of here chanting and yelling and shit, remember, people know his last name. Word will spread. He's shooting himself in the foot really fucking hard right now. And I'm terrified. I. Don't worry, she's a professional. But it'll make all the other girls jealous that she had someone, you know, a gentleman in her bed. A pro. Hey, yo? No TOS, okay. それで俺は言ってやったのよ正面の魔物は全て俺が一撃で倒すお前たちはあ<笑>泥沼かどうだったいろいろ試してはもらいましたがダメでしたあそっか Let's back it up a little bit because this is actually really interesting We're at 14 minutes 53 yeah We're at 14 minutes 53 real quick Right, let, let, let's try something out real, real quick. And it just came, came to my mind. It's interesting that, like, they're using still, like, we know that when he made love with Eris, right? When he had sex with Eris, quite literally, wine was used as, as a representation of sex, right? As a representation of all of that.、Um, and in both cases, in that case, he spilled the wine, right? He was able to go ahead and let it go and have, like, you know, and do the do. And it spilled, and that was a big representation of sex in that case. When we're looking in here, right? She's just, she's just whirling around, right? So the concept, and this is, this is something that, like, stuck out to me, which is, like, the whole concept of sex in this thing is, like, it's never spilled. If you look, it's kind of like teasing in this environment. And then the other one, he's like chugging it down, but it never spills again in that same way, in that same location, same anything. So it's interesting how they're using、uh, like grape juice, wine, whatever you want to go ahead and call it, as a big symbolism for sex in that, in that manner, you know? <laughs> Which is cool because he drinks it here, and then again at 14, whatever, right? He's chugging it down, but it's never like the same. So that's why I, I don't know. For me, it blows my mind that they're reusing this right from like Eris, that, like the aspect that happened over there with Eris, to like now in, in aspects of sex. Like beautiful,、uh, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Also, interesting. He's always the one advancing, but this time he's passive. Yeah. Yeah. It's indeed a theme I didn't notice. Well, I, I'm glad I at least managed to get, like, get one thing out there that people might, might like or, and or notice.、Uh... <laughs> Dude, that's insane. That's insane. Did she peg you? <laughs> Did she say. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Did she say, have my kittens? Yeah. Did that work or no? <laughs> oh, no. Maybe that would have worked, bro. You don't know. You gotta have, you gotta have some like triggering stuff, you know, to get your mind going, get your mind、uh, revving up a little bit. I was gonna ask the same thing. <laughs> 
if she used a kid in Zion, it would have probably given him a panic attack. Probably. Or we don't know that really, right? Because she looks like her. His mind could go ahead and like semblance it in a way. Yeah. Well, PTSDC. Uh, I love when my psychologist brings up pegging. Well, bro, let's let's be real. It's a form of sex. A lot of people like to go out and be like, mm, I'm going to be real with you. Considering Eris' family, that might actually be a service to certain brothels. Rudy has been defeated by his worst enemy, Ed. I mean, oh, dude. あ、<笑><笑> What have I been saying, boys? What have I been what have I been saying, boys? What have I been saying, boys? Boys! Boys! Is Sophie gonna be his home? Oh my god! Is Sophie gonna be his home? Is Sophie gonna be his home? Oh my, yeah, is, is, is Sylphie going to be his home? Is, is that what we're getting at? Yeah, this is a professional. Leave it to him. Sylphie is not with us anymore. Dude, dude, Chiba, no, no. So this, this is what I'm thinking is like almost immediately, like, because I've been talking about this. I've been talking about attachments and how we heal and how often Zen's we need someone, uh, like that we trust that we can that we already have an intimate relationship with not a sexual relationship but just being intimate and vulnerable with to allow us to process to heal rudius is just like me like i i am ooh ooh i am so curious man i am so curious like now comes the question is this what the academy setting is going to be like first off if sophie goes as fits does Rudy recognize Sylphie or no? Is, is Rudy as like <laughs> emoji reactor blind to stuff like, oh, that is Fitz. <laughs> Do you think he might find cute? Probably. He probably swings both ways, Nick. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Keep watching and you'll see. This is Rudy we're talking about. He's not going to notice. Didn't her hair color change? He might not. I mean, yeah, yeah. Rudy is... Alright, you guys ready? Someone whom he feels would never turn on him. Would never leave him. Would never... Oh, dude. I think we know. I think we know, brothers. I think we know. I am kind of curious to what he asked her to do or what they tried. I'm I'm really curious. I'm really curious uh, in in that manner, and it's not like a bra. Like, what are you talking about, right? But for example, the reason why I'm asking this is because people get really desperate whenever they like there. It's their first encounter with erectile dysfunction or something like that, and oftentimes they go into wild, wild extremes. Never gonna give you up. So I, I'm I'm curious about what methods they tried to either work and or not work and considering nothing really worked. I'm curious if he was the one leading the charge or if she was the one that was leading the charge for that. Mm. Oh. You sure about that? だよな。とりあえず今日は飲め。死ぬほど飲んじまえ。はい。あの、お客様、そろそろ閉店の時間です。ああ。おお、もうそんな時間か。ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ
永久に潜るときはよ焦らねえようにしてるんだあ,あ迷宮ってのは下に降りていけば行くほど強い魔物が出てくる、right. 時に魔物同士で連携もしてくるそんな時に焦って闇雲に突っ込んでも被害が大きくなるだけだだから少し前の階層で徐々に慣らしていく非常に有効だなうん they using this as an allegory for sex? Because if he is, that's kind of genius way of putting it. I'm not gonna lie. It's a post champ moment. I, th this, an this analogy is beautiful, dude. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. You pretty much, like, you, you, you take your time with it. Like, you, you take your time with it. You get used to it. And as you slowly start descending down. Yeah, s o d a is a real one on that one. Also, it's valuable knowledge in this general world. Well, relationship and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, that's, that's the overall main thing. <laughs> Sold it as an S rank adventure, an S rank bro, and an S rank lover. He knows how to treat you right. <laughs> oh, you go da! I know, Sarah, that kicka. I stole you, Hayasugitan Janeka. Hey, Hayai Tenanyo, Gada. Tashka, and you're a Hayai Kido. Sarah to a Hayai Mosemonezo. Chiki, oh, go no ho, a Kakugo, Mojumi, Motiki, Takedo. Oh, my no ho, a sa. Yes. Yes. Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.Yes.
違ういいものは<笑>ああ二度と顔を見せないで<笑>ああ and she still had the sword she still had the sword from him so she was wanting to talk She literally still had the sword, so she, the dagger, so she really just wanted to talk with him. Like, oh, she wanted to see what was going on. She was gonna be there for him. Like, this is the conversation that was coming, and oh, oh she was literally there to talk, dude. Oh, that hurts. Not anymore. Anta. それはないよ。Now you've lost everything. And the anxious attachment starts coming to you because now it's finalized, and you know you've lost something important to you, and all that trauma comes coming through again. So what does that do for you? Fight or flight activates again because now someone that you were starting to get attached to, that you were kind of having these difficulties, where you st start propping up again. So you decide to fly and you decide to run away. And what comes to mind? Probably, you know, you trying to find yourself in a setting where you can go ahead and be alone or be or study or something for a while because of this trauma. This trauma has activated literally. Every single thing that has happened beforehand because you did not heal. You did not take the time to actually learn and grow. And you were taking steps to grow. However, you weren't prepared for this. You were not prepared for this. And neither was she. So, this activates pretty much everything for you. And I, I expect you to flee. Because out of a flight or flight situation, you keep flying. Trigger warning? Uh, well, trigger warning, chat. His call of the void keeps getting stronger and stronger. His call of the void is literally like, I'm worthless. Nothing is there for me. So I have to go ahead and do this. Like, that's it. Like, that's game, whatever. There's no hesitation, right? And, and, and through this, though, Like, I love the fact that, like, Soldat does step in and Soldat does remind him. But that's because this is a person that's lost everything. His trauma was re triggered. And this is why I say relapsing is a normal part of the process, guys. When we relapse, I'm bringing this up because fuck it. Uh, here we go. I believe it's this one. This is the cycle of change, right? So, for example, we enter, right? We start thinking about. Changing, we start thinking about aspects like this. Hmm, okay, what can I do? We start preparing for it, like we start hanging out with more people. Oh, action! All of a sudden, you are you went out, you saved Sarah. Maintenance, you had this this aspect right here, and there was a little bit of a break because Sarah didn't like you know, you and Sarah had some difficulties, and then a full break when you said that. So now it's relapse time again. This is realistically, this is a realistic cycle that everyone goes through. We all go through this cycle of change, right? When we're in maintenance and if we actually find stability in here, it can lead to a lasting change and we can move. However, most people relapse and most people go through this cycle over and over and over again, especially when it comes to trauma, especially when it comes to even substances, gambling, 101 other things that are addictive in nature. Sex can be addictive in nature. Relationships can be addictive in nature and aspects like that. That is... Wow, that is some powerful, powerful stuff. That is that is really, really powerful stuff. The fact that they that they touched on here. I think he's done and he knows it, yeah. Yeah. アスラ王国かイリスさすがに遠すぎるな<笑>じゃあ俺たちと来るか<笑>ネリス公国の方に大規模な迷宮が見つかってな俺たちは今日中に立とうと考えてるお前 Then s o l a t just saying bros like he's, he's trying everything and then he's like alright bros before hoes bros before <laughs> 
<laughs> Soul Dad is like, hey, all right, you, you come, you, yeah. Oh, beautiful. He's the, XRC, I know, it's a joke, brother. It's a joke. But also, it is, it's absolutely true, though. Like, it, in a way, for a lot of people, that's the immediate response, right? As you try and appease a situation. And it's kind of funny, because he's doing exactly what Rudy does. Rudy tries to appease a situation like that. And his immediate thing is, he appeases the situation. Why? Because it's it's uncomfortable. It's really, really uncomfortable in a situation like that, right? So that really is best girl. I mean, you, you encounter someone you care about or someone that you're starting to become friends with and they go through a really, really fucking rough time. All of a sudden, you feel guilty. There's a lot of weird sensations that start popping up. And you're like, all right, well, how can I, how can I best handle this? He's a true bro. That's the best way to put it. Um, but if the purpose when someone's like that is if you're depressed, if you're... If you're going through something like that, oftentimes just a single purpose can get a per uh, purpose can get a person to start evolving. So that is really just trying to help as best he can. He knows he can't push Rudy to the, do the best for himself. Yeah, exactly. You just push him to be able to go ahead and like keep one thing there, keep one thing aspect, like keep an aspect of themselves alive in themselves. <laughs> Yeah. Powerful shit. Really, really powerful shit. And and overall, as an attachment, like, you know, through an attachment lens, it's true. How do we heal, guys? We heal by the connections we make. We, yeah, I know there's a post-credit scene, so hold on. Like, we heal by the connections we make and legitimately uh the, honestly yeah honestly when it it's hard for me to like literally rate this like in in but at the moment if i were to take in some shows some isekai shows that we watched or moshoku moshoku fucking takes that takes the cake easy w like you're telling me in three episodes it's already hit on deeper themes of connections than some shows really do throughout an entire season like yeah, it, it's it's really, really nice. It is really, really powerful in that, like, in of itself, and I, and I guess this is a mess message to take to heart for yourself as well. We heal through the connections that we make. We heal through the friendships that we make. We heal through the people that we surround ourselves by. And of, oftentimes, that is probably the best approach to go ahead and have. And reserve... All right, as this is playing out while we wait for that. Whew. Powerful episode. Really, really strong episode. If you guys were novel, like, you're, you're watching them, or reading the novels and watching the anime, how was this for you? Here, I'll, I'll lower it a little bit more. 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, it was great. Missing the oh, there was a Sarah POV. I felt like a kick. Very good adaptation. I cried, bro. It, it's really good. It's powerful shit, dude. You think it was rushed, walking dude? I thought it was kind of nice. I'm not gonna lie. We're on, but I loved it. Oh, Natalie. Hit every beat. We found. Even more depressing in the novel version. Oh, is it? Faltan unas cosas, pero no se podía perder nada más. Me encantó. Yeah. Sounds good, SB. <laughs> 
I feel too bad for Sarah right now. I know Rudy is whatever. Can we give a shout out to the director? Likely pressured to leave out the self harm. Oh shit! Hold on. We're back. We're back. Backfire Rudy is. <laughs> Wait, is that Lena Lise? Oh, bro, she about to go. This is about to be a. Uh, 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 this is about to be on on the Pornhub X videos. Like, <laughs> uh, l l l let's let me hear this rumor real quick. そう言われても俺だってそんなに詳しいわけじゃ。ほら、頑張って。もし思い出してくれたら私の体を好きにしてもいいですわよ。なあ、思い出した。バシャラントだ。バシャラントの第三都市ピピン。あらそう。ありが
progressing and healing and relapsing and all of that in a very, very realistic sense. Keep fucking with you guys. Okay, no, but seriously. So here's here's what I was saying, right? Is when it comes to a situation like that, one one of the big things that I wanted to go ahead and highlight and talk about before we before jumping into this call real quick is oh, hold on. All right, they're here. They're here. Hello, hello. Okay. All right, guys. Let let me quickly. Okay, yeah. no, can you guys hear? Me? <laughs> okay, you guys can hear me. Perfect. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I was, I was gonna say, let me quickly address this real quick because I had a couple weird DMs come my way the other day after doing like a random Twitter post about like Rudius and how uh, I forgot what it was about, like something about sexual trauma and so on and so forth, right? I got a bunch of people literally just throwing it out. Like, how could you know that? And it's like, uh, here, I'll showcase how I can know that. Literally, one of the biggest aspects, these are all peer-reviewed paper on the impacts of PTSD and anxiety and stress and how trauma is stored in the balls. And no, I'm kidding. But you guys know what I'm getting at. It's like, <laughs> these, these are all quite literal uh, papers that you have to study as a psychologist, that you have to go ahead and understand and see the way that stress and other things can affect the body, whether it's sexual performance or so on and so forth. So I'm just I'm just throwing that out there just because there's a, there seems to be like a little bit of a it's just some people that have some hate stuff towards all three of us for some reason. And they're like, oh, we're spoiling one another. Or, oh, they're reading. He's reading ahead or they're telling him what to say. And it's like, no, what, what the fuck are you guys on about? Weird. I'll counter that because I've seen some comments and I haven't said anything, but. One, you've got many things wrong. So if you're a light novel reader, you're shit at your job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly you're not a light novel reader. Second, to the people saying I'm spoiling Ed, it's cut content. It's not spoiler. Cut content. It's all backstory. It's all been cut out of the anime because, again, you've got to condense it down into a bite-sized chunk for anime fans. Yes, it sucks that it's never one-to-one -one ratio of light novel to anime, but pacing is fundamental. And I've seen so many comments of people like, oh, well, episode one was too slow. And then episode two came out and everyone's like, oh, it's too fast. It's like, and this is the problem. They've got to balance it. And so I remember when I spoke about uh, Sarah's backstory, which in this episode, it was more of a throwaway comment, but there was a lot of stuff about her reasoning. That was purely cut, like everyone from a mile away that's read the light novels that had half a common sense knew that was going to be cut because pacing is just one of those things and there was actually a lot cut from this episode well not a lot but it was sarah's point of view of this episode so if you'd like to know the cut content I'm more than happy to tell you i guarantee you i put my entire youtube career on it it will <laughs> not be covered next episode it will be volume eight now i mean i don't mind it but like that's that's my main thing of clarification is because some people either think that like one I'm reading ahead or two you guys are feeding me information so that way it's like I know what's coming and it's like no that doesn't that doesn't work that way like what the fuck are they on about? <laughs> no, but yes, I mean, apart from apart from what you hear on the streams, um, Ed never asks us for information about what's happening in the novels or anything like that. You know. Um, when we when we talk outside of the streams, it's usually just you know appreciation of the stuff that's been in the show that we've all enjoyed. Um, you know, on, on Twitter, we you know we we don't we have flirt some, with one like, another. Secret... Yeah, but we don't have some secret group chat where we just feed him spoilers, and we wouldn't need to anyway because they're all on my channel. He could just watch my videos <laughs> if he wanted to know what the spoilers. Did you know what? Ed, I have like review, 40 minute videos <laughs> like, <laughs> that explain <laughs> everything. <laughs> right. But I am curious, though, about, like, this episode. How would you guys feel about it? And, uh, yes, I do want to go into the cut content as well, SB. So, yes, you guys can hear I am asking about Sarah's POV. But I am curious. How would you guys feel about the episode? Loved it. I thought it was great. I it was everything I really wanted to see was included. Um yeah we already talked about it for three hours yeah and, well we didn't really we talked we, we had random really and uh so we ended up talking about a lot of random nonsense and general flirting and stuff as we usually do but <laughs> there was um 
there was a lot to discuss with this episode, a lot more than last week, and we did tell you that was going to be the case. So, yeah, I mean, my verdict was it it wrapped up this arc brilliantly. The little bit at the end with Alina Lease really, really set us up for what's going to come next, and I thought it was perfect, but SB? It was the worst episode ever. No, I'm <laughs> I really loved it. It was very emotional. I actually had to pour, like mute her at certain parts, like specifically at the parts where Rudy was like breaking down on Soldat, and I was just like, it, it was actually making me teary. So when I was watching yeah. you watch it, Ed, I was starting to get a bit teary. I was like, this really hits hard to home. Yeah, it's it's really well done, and I was really happy to see how they brought the emotions out, how Rudy just the the vo- the voice, the volume behind it how Soldat consoles him. And it also brings up to the point that I said many weeks ago about the analogy of the onion, peeling the onion. Because a lot of people saw Soldat in his early stages where people were like, oh, he's a bully. No, he's not a bully. I've been bullied my entire high school and primary school. There's a difference between being blunt and forward and being a bully. A bully is someone that is there to bring you down. Soldat's objective was never to bring him down but to open him up because rudy clearly faking the smile he was that's why he said your, your smile's creepy why are you faking it and also pointing out that everyone else is going through shit like why are you making it sound like you're the only one going through these problems so that could see that and that's why counter arrow wasn't helping rudy get over the trauma it was simply facilitating it basically keeping it nice and comfy and warm to just brew up while soldat was like nope i'm gonna pop this bad boy open and we're gonna rip it open and rip all the crap out like let's talk about it boy instead of it just kind of letting it bottle up he just said let's talk it over let's drink you vent it and another point too even rudy points out in when he's punching him soldat was in full control of that Mm -hmm. at any point soldat could have fought back and punched rudy back he didn't. And specifically in the light novels, it highlights that that Soldat tells everyone in that room to back off and let Rudy vent and let him take his swings out. Like everyone's just sitting there like, yep, Soldat's <laughs> got this. So that's why we call him Soldaddy. He's not best girl. He is best man. He is the Chad of all Chads because that is what a friend you want. You want someone there that is to call you out for your shit, to br- help you keep you up because facilitating bad behavior leads to continuous bottling up and that's what Rudy was doing and sold out was just this is why i love this episode because i love sold out as a character and it's funny because i made a tweet and i said about how because i was going to a convention this weekend which i've been out for two right. straight days so i've had little sleep and I'm, I'm doing well today i said to my friend in the car i said does sold out remind you of me and he's instantly turned to me and said yes just minus the alcohol problems <laughs> And that's, yeah, because I'm always very blunt, straight to the point. If there's a problem, you say it. Right. Don't hold back. You can solve it. Because I hate the bottling up. That's one thing I hate about us as humans. We bottle things up. And I do it all the time. I'm a hypocrite. I hate it, but I do it. And that's right. why it's important for people to call it out. That's why I just loved him as a character. But one thing to also know, it's mm-hmm. change content. That dagger in the light novels wasn't mm-hmm. Sarah's. It was his pocket knife. He pulls his pocket knife out and goes to stab himself and then instantly Soldat kicks it. But in the anime, it's changed to be her actual sword or dagger, however you want to call it, which I think is a really cool. nice little touch. And, yeah. You know, and the one we that both, on the day. We both agreed that that was an incredibly good choice for the anime. Like it was actually an improvement on what was in the light novel because the same event happens, but it's just got that extra like bite to it because it was something that they'd chosen together on their date, and yeah, she just rejected it, and yeah, well, my, it my, actually hit even harder. Yeah, I was gonna say my thing is this carried like so much weight and emotion to it, like Sarah's storyline, Soldat jumping in, and the fact that he was there and honestly helping him become better like becoming a better man uh inviting him along in the in the journeys like that he like you know him and his team are, are going out to go ahead and do for me it's like okay so that like you've had issues with him but you were calling him out on his shit and you've clearly had a night of drinking out with him and you've seen that like okay this man needs more than just this aspect you know he needs a purpose he needs a group 
And him offering that to Rudy, I'm like, this is not someone that wishes him harm, wishes him any bad, and wants him to get better. So for me, it was clear that Soldat is not a bully. Soldat is just like, uh, yeah, he's like Soldaddy. He's a he's a pretty good he's a he's a pretty good uh pretty good guy. And I'm I'm in the mood, ready to counter everyone in the chat. So the person that's saying they disagree and that Soldat didn't like Rudy or Timothy, no, he didn't like the way they were behaving. They didn't all dislike them overall. He just didn't like the way they were going about doing things like Rudy's fake smile, his fake persona, constantly bottling it all up. So that doesn't like that. He hates that because it's fake. He doesn't hate Rudy as a person. He literally he hates says that out. as well. Yeah. He literally yeah. says, and I have no reason to hate you now. You know? Yeah. I think he, he more like with Timothy, he more just disagrees with his leadership style. Timothy's too. Him too goody good and it ends up leading to like if you're all like a really close family it works well a small close family but in a larger more bigger oil machine sold out is the right kind of thing and i used a gaming analogy when i did world of warcraft i've been in many part of guilds and some of them are very small family nicks but if they got too big it fell apart because it became too hard for people in control to maintain it because everyone wanted different things everyone wanted to do things and so they had to prioritize and because it became very family it became very clicky but when you go into a hardcore guild that is big and functional the people in charge are blunt you shape up or you're out if you fuck up you omit it or you get out there's no messing around because it's an oiled machine you're doing hardcore shit you're going there's just no room for error People right. want to move like a like an oil cold machine, and the way to put it is for Soul Dad is that their lives are at stake. They're doing high end difficulty based dungeons, monsters, all that kind of stuff, like quests, etc. So they don't want to stuff around and be like, "Oh, let's make everyone feel happy." No, Soul Dad's like, "You mess around, you're out." This is an oiled machine, so that's why I like how Soul Dad approaches it. Again, if yeah. people want to think he's a bully, you're free to think that, but. Fundamentally, well, no. uh, I've been bullied my entire life. I know the difference. I mean, even jumping in. The, the second point Walking Dad made, um, no, it was more than that. So, Soldat really did hate Rudy, not just the pretentiousness. He also disliked Rudy doing things for free. He viewed that as an insult to people doing it for a living. And I think that, that there is something to that. But I think like in the novels, he was more framed as a rival to begin with. Rather than really just a example of adventurous because he was taking things for free, which then made it seem like, oh, well, we could just hire Rudy because he's free instead of hiring another adventurer. It's like, it's like imagine if you had like a professional, uh, I'm trying to think of a job, like a professional uh, psychologist. It's really mm. great his job. He helps many people. Or you could just go to a free random person and he just helps everyone. It's a bit of a bad analogy, but it kind of shows the professionalism. Like, Rudy's devaluing these adventurers and making it seem like, well, everyone should do a carton. Soldat's very professional. He wants this to be a world oil machine. He wants to be paid based on what he's valued at. And so he doesn't like this whole idea of Rudy going around half assing it all the time and being like, oh, yeah, I'll do it for a little, I'll do it for less as long as you do this kind of thing. It, it rubs him the wrong way. Well, I mean, even yeah, because he's. In a professional capacity but it did it wasn't a, a personal hatred for rudius i don't think he yeah, ever truly hated him. or he wouldn't have bothered he would have just seen him as this emo kid that goes around and he would have probably slagged him off to his friends or whatever but he wouldn't have taken that level of interest in him that he'd actually let him punch him when he could see that he was in pain you know right and i'm My not saying can is... arrow is a broken group or bad i'm just saying it's very different it's a small family type group while soul dance is a big oiled machine yeah just different leadership styles what timothy does works with counter arrow yeah, because yeah. they are a close-knit group and you so... can you can lead a close-knit group the way that he does where you want to care for everyone and keep them happy soul Dad wants to keep everyone at their best my thing is he... as i'm seeing this right because like, I always, like, assumed Soldat to be sort of, like, in, in my, where I train in martial arts and I teach martial arts and stuff, before you go off to a competition, 
we have to train you and you have to pass certain tests, right? I.e., if you are a danger to yourself or to the brand that you're representing, you're not going up there. I'm sorry, you don't meet the bill, and we have to be quite frank about it. Like, you are not up to fighting standards. You are a risk to yourself and to your competitor or so on and so forth, and we have to be pretty blunt. Like, we can be literally be super-duper nice to you and, like, you know, coddle you all the way up and go out there and you embarrass yourself and you put yourself and others at risk, or we're pretty blunt about it once yeah. you start running an organization. We're like, you are not ready for competition. You clearly need a lot more training. You are putting everyone and yourself at risk by going up here and doing certain things. And another way to think about it is is simply like this. If the, we had, a, like, we all ran ice cream shops. SB has an ice cream shop. Nat has an ice cream shop. I do as well. And all of a sudden, SB decides to just sell all of his ice cream for free. What does that do? It puts a weird expectation on Nat and I that we have to give our services away for free as well. SB is damaging the like the economy of the system in here, and all of a sudden we're in competition. To, like we're there's going to be some mixed emotions against SB here because he's driving our prices down, and people are expecting certain things out of us that we can't deliver. And it's not just like fair competition. It's basically driving you into the negative as well. Right. It's not like it's like, oh, well, we're still making profits, but just a little bit less. This is like, no, you've got to do this for free. And that's the issue. These adventurers, this is their livelihood. They don't get money. They don't, they don't put food on the table. So it, it's a very different state. And Rudy was sort Rudy, of... Rudy was naive in that he just didn't think about the economics of it. He just thought, this is the fastest way to achieve my goal of spreading my name. And to help people, you know, um, he didn't really think about the economy and he really should have because, you know, being Paul's son, he should really have. And, and he was with Dead End when they were completely broke, when they were first in the Demon Continent. You know, he didn't have the whole backing of his noble background or any of that. He was completely broke and they had to work. So he should really have thought of that, but he wasn't in a position to do that he only had one goal he didn't really care about being an adventurer he just wanted to spread his name to try and find zenith and that right. was his mistake you know i mean soldat was right to be annoyed that he was doing that but if soldat genuinely hated him he really wouldn't have let this situation where he let rudy kind of spend himself out with his frustration and all that and then once he'd done that, he could open him up and actually get out of him what the real issue was and try and help him. So exactly. well, someone says, I don't think Rudy cared about anything other than himself while he was depressed. Uh, JP, when you're depressed, oftentimes you are your biggest obstacle. Right, let's just be real about it. Or when you're really, really anxious, like the only thing you can think about is yourself. And at that moment, how to go ahead and sometimes not even survive, just get through the day. So sadly, uh, that might be the case in, in that scenario. Uh, Apparently, I, see... I, I don't know if this is true. Um, obviously, Ed will know. But um, when people are very depressed, you can mm -hmm. actually tell by the amount of the time, the things they talk about have the word I in them they become very self-centered even though they hate themselves a lot of the time and they're not happy thinking about themselves all the time they still can't really think about anything else and so um in your communications you might try and mask that you might try and not reveal that that's that you are being that self-centered or whatever because you know you you know that nobody likes that nobody wants to be around someone like that and so you you know that it will make things worse for you but that itself takes a level of self-awareness that you can't really expect Rudy is to have at this point. Well, through that, and you're, and you're right, there are a lot of cognitive distortions that, like, it's very obvious when someone's going through something like this because you start seeing the all or nothing thinking. And in a real sense, people start circling back on their stories, like, time after time after time after time after time. So you hear a lot of the I statements start coming out in a non healthy way. And then all of a sudden, it becomes into like people pleasing techniques and 101 other aspects out there that we do see Rudy as use, which is why I'm like, this is a really good series to showcase how real these characters are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I was really excited for this episode. I feel like I stole the mic as soon as I got on stream. I'm very passionate about Soldat, as you can see. <laughs> but it, it's it's just so amazing to see such a grounded, realistic, like, I mean, there's heaps of them, but just Soldat, just, there's something special about him. Maybe it's because I do kind of resonate with Soldat mm -hmm. and that kind of leadership, blunt, 
way of going about things. So I, I just, again, if people want to think he's a bully, you're entitled to your own opinion. It's just, I've been, been around the block enough times. I know the difference. Yeah. And I get what Nop31 is saying, you know, they're not entitled to my kindness if they suck. But Soldat did still give his kindness to Rudy. He still saw some worth in doing that. I think he's, he knew that whatever it was going on with Rudy was a temporary thing that could be worked through and that the Rudy that you could have with you long term or for the medium term at least was someone worth helping. Um, as we saw when he asked him to join him in the end, that wasn't out of pity. You know, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't care about adding someone who was worthless to his party or someone who was just a liability. Soldat, was bad as well. Like at the end of it, you could see he was just like, Pat, he's like, it's all right, man. I'm sorry. Kind of, he sold out realized he did push him a little bit too far. Right. And if he was trying to be a bully, he wouldn't have cared. He would just been like, ah, whatever. And then fobbed off. My thing is, we, we've never, like, at least my my main thing is, his intent for me was never like, oh, he's doing this with the purpose of harm. He was doing it with the purpose of calling something out and critiquing something uh, from the times that I've mm -hmm. seen. And that that is a clear distinction. Like, you can critique someone, you can call someone out. But if I, like, every day, let's say SB and I got in a call and I'm like, SB, you suck. You blah, 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 blah. And it's like every day a pervasive pattern of me doing this. That is bullying. It is a pervasive pattern that yeah. happens of emotional and physical abuse. However, so what Soldat is doing, for me, it's more of a critique and more of trying to go ahead and figure out what the, for example, what is your problem, SB? Why are you so mad? Like, what's going on? It's more of that rather than, like in like intensive bullying that like SP can't handle, or intensive functioning. Yeah, if you're but, having someone bully you, you know, if you feel bullied by someone, would you then, when you reach the breaking point of that, which had nothing to do with sold out, sold out was just there, would you then like pin them down, punch them, and when they don't fight back, expect to just keep punching them? You know, like there was so much of that scene that was sold out letting him do it, and just tanking it because he felt like that was the process that needed to happen. Soldat is a strong fighter. He could have decked Rudy if he wanted to, but he didn't. And yeah, would a bully do that? Would right. a bully be like, yeah, you might say, oh, well, a bully's a coward. Of course, once you fight back, they're not going to do anything. Soldat is not a coward. Soldat is not weak physically. Also, to be a coward, you would order. need to think that you could lose. Soldat knew he would not lose a fight with Rudy, even in close. Even if Rudy got the jump, Soldat knows he could overpower him instantly. So, cowardness wouldn't apply to that because. I mean, he was but at, at the same time, I mean, Rudy is probably could beat him if he used magic, but you could see but that Rudy that wasn't much. trying to hurt Soldat. He was just venting. Venting. And so a fist fight against someone stronger than you that you know is stronger than you is like something you might do out of frustration. If he'd actually genuinely been like, this guy's been bullying me. I bloody hate him. Rudius could have used magic. He could have injured sold out way worse, but he didn't. This was the kind of thing you see happen with real people. And uh, yeah. When you take when you add the fact that they do have these like fantasy abilities, Rudius could potentially be stronger than Soldat outside of a fist fight if he could use magic, in which he can use whenever he wants because he can use voiceless magic. It's like, well, yeah. So Soldat and Rudius, there was no bully victim dynamic there. That's just not how that was. So real quick, I'm, I'm going to clarify this. DNA, who were the psychologists back in medieval times? Let, let's talk about this, right? Who were the most most of the mental health, uh, I'm going I'm to put quotation marks, experts around this, but like who, who did most people go for mental health uh, help? I balked at it because for the most part, is it conducive to healing? A majority of the time it isn't. If you go to a brothel and you just fuck the nearest thing around you, is it going to heal you? Probably not. Are you going to get your needs met? Yeah. But are you still going to have that issue present? Yes. But back in the back in the old days, syphilis as well. yeah, and you may get a disease. Let's be real. But back in the old days, yeah, you're right. DNA bartenders, priests, hookers, everything, so on, so forth, were what people went to to go vent their frustrations and issues at. So that's sort of where the idea. 
Go ahead. To British people, that is kind of the way it is now. Like, um, my dad said this to me, you know, um, when I was going through a bad time and all that, me and my dad were just talking, because me and my dad talk about a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, I was saying, oh, yeah, you know, my ex, he's, like, gone to therapy and stuff. That's, like, you know, and my dad was like, yeah, why doesn't he just go and talk to a bartender like what we do in England, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, you can talk to the bartender, you can sleep with the bartender, you know? <laughs> There's a lot more you can do with a bartender. Not trying to dismiss your profession or anything, but we don't tend to think of that as the first resort. You know, like the first right. resort when you feel like you want to talk about something is usually the bartender or somebody who actually has some connection to you it doesn't you know just anyone will listen it doesn't need to be someone who's going to give you advice or somebody who actually knows what you're going through but again yeah hookers bartenders and priests would be the people you would go and talk to and I think like for British people because we don't really have quite the same culture of therapy as you do in America it's like yeah I, I would rather go and sit in my local pub and talk to my bartender Dave who knows what I drink and is my friend. And I still do that, to be honest. Um, right. It's it's just like, yeah, I actually can see why, yeah, your locals down the pub or your mates off Twitter or, you know, like whoever you just normally vent to, you might actually prefer that to a professional yeah. who doesn't care about you as an individual at all necessarily i mean i'm sure like as professionals you do want to help everybody who comes to you but you know if i was your customer would you care about me as much as you do when i'm your friend and i would rather talk to a friend right you know? see there's and, and i think that's a that's a key difference in that right is like how did we come to the professionalism that is psychology uh, nowadays and it came from this this aspect of brothels and you know your friends that were there with you and bartenders and so on and so forth because that's how a lot of people even today and you're right like a lot of people go to and that's like the cheapest form of therapy if we're going to be honest sometimes people just need to go ahead and vent uh and sometimes that's when people tell their story people heal and you know, I shared the story of my friend who, uh, like, because you guys know I lived in the, the Netherlands for like three years, four years almost. Uh, so I spent a majority of time around Amsterdam, Leiden, the, like The Hague, all these areas. I, I shared that story, not fucking knowing what was about to happen in this show, but because it's a very real thing. People, oftentimes, there's a relationship issues. They go off and they literally try and find... To a way to drown their sorrows, a way to vent, a way to whatever. Most therapists aren't open at night. I hate to break everyone's bubbles or psychologists are open at night. So what's the nearest thing? Alcohol and sex. And it's a very, very common thing for situations like that to happen. Yeah. But it's not the alcohol. It's the ambience in the bar. If you are in somewhere like London where it's very normal for your local pub to be a place where you go and watch sport together, you, you know, you're always... You know everyone in there. If you're going through something, you know someone there will listen to you. It might be the bartender. It might be one of the random alcoholics that sits up there. <laughs> or it might be someone you're in a pub quiz team with or something. There is very much that culture of those are who you go to. Right. Um, and, you know, me and my dad were just talking about that. Like, you know, it's not like we don't seek out talking to people, but we just tend to, instead of making it, something you need to be more knowledgeable about than me to do. You just need to be someone who is at least somewhat invested in me not being miserable, you know, <laughs> like even if you're just a casual friend or something, it's kind of like, yeah. And I, I think like some of my friends have told me that when they have issues, like the person they always talk to is me and I'm like, but I don't, I'm not really like, particularly into like therapy speak or anything but they they would sort of say yeah but you try and find solutions right and so there are certain people you go to who will try and find solutions like you're broke what can you do you know i'll try and come up with an answer to that um other people will try and um talk about the root causes of your anxiety and things like that that are causing that and that's more the realm of a different type of person to me. I tend to be a bit more practical about what can we do about this? How can we make this better? 
by taking some action. And sometimes you talk to someone who isn't ready to take an action yet. They just want to vent. And that's only fun if they're entertaining about it. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> so I have a question for both of you. What is really sexuality? Oh, we don't even agree on this. Oh. We don't. And we're meant, we're meant to be a couple and we don't agree. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> And I've got, fr- I'm, I actually spoke, because I went to a convention, I asked heaps of my friends there the same question. They all stuck up for me. They agreed with me. They agreed with yeah, you? Yeah, I'm going to talk about. I'm, I'm, I'm more, I'm more vigored in staying my course on that. Thanks I'm to them. I'm going to around. But this isn't really a conversation we can have with you yet, Ed. No! <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Okay, not yet. <laughs> Later in the season, yes. But okay. when, when, when you're a little bit older, Ed, we'll have that discussion. When, when I'm a little bit older. Okay, got it. Got it. Well, at least yeah. I know mom and dad don't agree, guys. We're hearing this live. <laughs> oh, gosh. Rip Bozo. Wow, thanks, guys. You see, I even get, like, my chat just loves it. <laughs> <laughs> but here's, here's my thing is, putting because one thing is empathizing with Rudy, right, and what he went through, and... I guess chat was saying like Sarah, like a lot of people were kind of picking on Sarah, calling her an asshole and stuff like this. What'd you guys feel about that? Cause for me, I empathize with Sarah and I'm like, there's a lot of concepts of shame of like, am I good enough? So on and so forth. A lot of these schemas that might be popping up yeah. in our head as well. We both, we hated the response of people going on about Sarah. We, we've been, you know, ever since we did our own stream, then we were just watching yours, staying on, on chat and looking at Twitter um he tweeted uh sorry did nothing wrong i retweeted it uh we would listen to the portion where you saw that bit and you were saying you know it's a defense mechanism her going all sundry like that it's yeah she's she's a teenage girl right that was ready to lose her virginity but it didn't quite work out and she already had the out because she'd already said you know the fact that you saved my life makes me feel this way and she could then save face in her own mind it's that we were saying you know it's like that i dumped you first thing you Mm -hmm. know that teenagers do it's she did nothing wrong she just acted in a way that someone of her level of experience and age would act and you know she probably wanted to hurt him a little bit but the the hurt that he felt wasn't from her saying that you know, it was from his own inability to perform and the fact that he knew where that came from. It didn't come from Sarah. You I know, think a lot of the people that thought she was in the wrong would have probably made the exact same choice if in her position. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, yeah, someone my age wouldn't do that. You would you wouldn't do that. You would you would probably just like you were saying earlier when you were watching that part of the episode, there are certainly ways you can still have a good time if the person you're with can't get it up. You right. might assume, well, he's drunk. It's nothing to do with me. It's just, you know, he's had too much to drink. Let's see if the same thing happens again next time. You know, someone more experienced, if it had been Alina Lise or Zenith or somebody, they wouldn't have acted like that. But because it's a girl that is a teenager she, she's about to lose her virginity she's she feels like she's giving something very important to him and he's not responding in the way that she'd imagined of course she's going to try and save face you know uh, or try and sort of sting him back I'm she a- she did nothing wrong she just acted in character i'm going to ask this question because people people love to go ahead and make this like like I can already imagine people are like, oh, Sarah, this, Sarah, that. But let's be honest. Your first time, how was it, guys? We're we're going there. <laughs> we're we're going deep. How was it for for yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> um, my my um, I don't really remember because I was drunk, and then two years later, he came out as gay. Oh. <laughs> You know, he was 15 and <laughs> neither of us knew what we were doing. It doesn't really matter. Um, right. I still know him actually on Facebook though. Good guy. <laughs> but... 
I'll be honest, mine was awkward as fuck. Like, I was like, what do you do here? Uh, 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 we, we had a little bit to drink, but it wasn't much. We're just like, uh, this, this, you, okay, does this feel good? It's awkward. And yeah, you know, once you get into it, you get into it, but it, it was a little awkward. To me, it was just like, I, I just, I don't think it was that significant a turning point in my life. It was just something that was going to happen inevitably at some point. I'm glad it happened with someone who was nice and everything, you know? Yeah, he did turn out to be gay after having another girlfriend after me. I'd like to say I didn't turn him gay. I wasn't that bad. But, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it was just one of those sort of high school things. Right. It wasn't really... It wasn't really um, a big drama or anything, and it wasn't that momentous of an occasion that you felt like it needed any build-up. But if it had been, um, you know, like that he had had the same issue as Rudius, I think we probably would have just fell asleep. You know, it's not really... Wouldn't have been a big issue. But I can see that, again, we had been out drinking and all that as kids in london i want to do you know (laughs) it's kind of like yeah i I can see why maybe for other people who are a bit more serious a bit less kind of party people or whatever than i was at that age because i was a bit of a normie a bit of a like party girl or whatever um (laughs) i can see why maybe to people who are just less kind of casual and blase about life at that age you might be very like, oh no, this is really important. And some of my friends were like that. You know, some of the girls that I was friends with were very like, is this normal? Is this this? Is this that? You know, and we were all trying to find those answers to these things that, you know, we we didn't, we could only really ask older people for advice. Um, Right. But yeah, it wasn't really a particularly momentous occasion, I think something I probably haven't even thought about for like 20 you, years. Until you see? You <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be honest, I like, because in, in my school, that's the sexual education isn't the greatest in the States. Just throwing this out there. Right. A lot of times you get some weird gym teachers. It's like, if you have sex, you'll die. Like just random, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't grow up in the States. So we're right. a little bit less, uh, <laughs> you'll definitely get AIDS and be pregnant yeah like scare tactics I mean, I mean like when I was 13 I remember one time I, I got really sick like I just I just felt like I was going to throw up in the morning and I said to my mom oh, I feel I feel ill I'm, I, I feel like I need to skip school today you know I just had a stomach bug or something but my mom was like you're not pregnant are you and I went <laughs> No, I was a virgin at the time because I was uh-huh. 13. You know, none of my friends weren't virgins at 13. We didn't live in like one of these like debauched places or anything. And she was just like, are you sure though? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I haven't done anything that could get me pregnant. Was it? I don't even know if I'd even started my periods yet. You know? like, <laughs> but my mother was just like so worried by all the stuff about teen pregnancy on TV. But she oh. was like, are you definitely sure, though? Are you definitely sure? I'm like, I am 100% sure that I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Knocked real quick because you said abstinence only. I actually had a psychology professor get fired uh, in college, not even not even in high school, in college, because he, he was going over sex, like sexology and concepts of sex. And there were these really, really religious girls up front. They asked him, obviously thinking that abstinence was going to be his answer. Like, what is the safest, like, you know, or best way to, like, not get pregnant, right? And they were expecting abstinence to be the answer. And his answer was was hilarious because he was, like, anal, 100%. Just take a ride with it. (laughs) And I think they they spoke up or something. But, like, yeah, they had a – next thing I know, next semester he was gone. But anyway, SP, what about yourself, man? <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, no problem, man. No problem. Uh, good loophole. God's loophole, guys. That was <laughs> not God's loophole. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> my, my main thing, though, is I feel like remembering back to like those first times as weird or traumatic or you know for some of us it might have been indifference or whatever 
if you put yourself in that situation, you encounter what Sarah encountered. It's like, hmm, that could be a lot. Like, I, I if I put myself in Rudy's shoes, I'm like, I would be frustrated. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the communication skills that I have today or the knowledge that I have today. And I would probably That's like, nice. uh, yeah, that self esteem. My self esteem would take a big tumble out of that. So I don't expect. I don't know how. Like hindsight is always key for a lot of people where. Uh, they look back and they're like, oh, well, I would have done this, I would have done that. But if you put yourself in that scenario, it's like, yeah, I don't think so. That fight or flight mechanism kicks in. You're just a teenager and shit like this going on. It, it's scary. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I really, like, we, we were both saying while we were watching what people were saying on Twitter and in, well, SB was looking at the Mishoku Tensei Discord as well. And a lot of people just complaining about Sarah's behavior in that scene. I feel like they just weren't able to empathize with a girl that age in that situation. And when you see later Rudius, um, you know, having a conversation he never thought Sarah would ever hear. He's drunk. He's talking to Soldat. He assumes Sarah's never going to hear this. He's just mouthing off. Right. When he says something he doesn't mean, they can empathize with why. But when Sarah says something she doesn't mean, she's a bitch or she's, you know, a bad person for doing that. And it's like, no, they're both the same reasons, you know? So I was highlighting this as well because, you know, in in the, the middle of it, as we were approaching it, like, I, I guess... The whole th aspect of Rudy not getting hard and whatnot, of, uh, you know, people sort of trying to make fun of Rudy and whatnot. And I'm not sure if you guys agree with me on this, where I'm like, isn't this the same bullying behavior that happened when he was on Earth, where people were making fun of a small pecker because he was tied up and people were, like, pointing and laughing at a small dick, right? In a similar instance where people, some people take to Twitter and other instances, and they might be making fun of him for not being able to get hard. And I'm like, you guys are just, like, falling into that same cycle where, oh, yeah, he's he's softiest now, or whatever the fuck they want to call it and call him. And it's like, you guys were... Like the, Go ahead. the series never played it that way, though. It never played it in a way that was remotely comedic. And right. Then, even when Rudy's kind of making fun of himself when he's talking about this issue in his, like, inner monologue voice, in his earthiest voice, he... You, you're never supposed to laugh at him for experiencing this. It's right. it's just a very good, I think, representation of what he's been through and how it affects him and how much that matters to him. You'll you'll see more, you know, in the rest of the season where this kind of goes, you know, where why he cares so much about it. Um and how much it's like part of his identity, whether he can fix this problem. But yeah. I don't think that it was ever we're supposed to sort of go, oh, yeah, Rudius is so funny. He, you know, he's I, I've made jokes about old Mr. Floppy in videos when I've talked about <laughs> it just because it's a funny thing to say when you're trying right. to make a video. But I'm not actually I would never make fun of someone for having that issue. And Rudius kind of lends it. He's a character who when you read his like inner monologues and that he does lend it's himself to. There's those kind of cringy jokes you can make about him, you know? Um, but he, and I think the audience, are not supposed to treat him that way, like be like, oh, let's call him softius or, you know. I don't think it drives you to think of it that way. Like, oh, it's so hilarious that Rudy has this problem after being such a perv, you know? Like, it, no, it's just sexuality was always written to be a big part of his self-identity and what he wanted out of life and now he doesn't understand why that's not functioning for him well, and it's it, really important to him to find out and to add on real quick there are like people that go through this because this is I don't understand why some people think that this is like an anime only thing and this is like one, one of the major issues that I was responding to earlier which is like dude I'm like there's no way for me to like have time to read anything, let alone, let alone breathe. 
But when it comes to something like this, sexual dysfunctions are a very, very real thing. They happen a lot. And I, I have a lot of older clients that I talk to that have sexual dysfunction. They, they, they've told me pretty much everything from they've tried almost every remedy in the book. They've done almost any type of sexual encounter out there to try and see if they can, you know, perform. They try like the blue pill and other pills out there that they think might go aphrodisiacs and other things out there that they think might help them. And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. And it's a mixed bag because every person is different and every situation is different, but trauma and stress and uh, any type of emotional dysregulation can affect you. If not met mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually. And people need to take well, that into remember consideration. In, in season one, we did see when Rubius went to the market with Eris mm -hmm. that there is a very powerful aphrodisiac that does exist in the setting of Mashoku Tensei. Is it coming back? Is that is that what I'm what, what I'm getting? <laughs> Are we about to see Rudy on the hub for an aphrodisiac? <laughs> oh, let's go! No, that that the last that is. That isn't what I'm hinting at, but there is some. Um, the, the fact he's aware it exists in the world is certainly something you would consider if you were experiencing that problem. Like someone in the real world might be aware that Viagra exists and might right. consider that that's something that they might try. You know. Right, and and I think I think you're right with that. If there is something, if there are aphrodisiacs or whatnot, you would probably be on the search for something like that. Logically speaking, it makes sense. Absolutely. Wasn't it a Fatoa specialty? Is what they're asking. What's up, uh, Regals on? Regals on? I can't the even Fatoa see. The Fatoa region was the region where um, the region that disappeared in the right the um, mass teleportation incident. And yes, it was, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean it had never been exported anywhere. It would just be even more rare. Viagra doesn't solve the root of the issue, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't solve the root of the issue. But for some people, it helps their self-esteem at least a little bit to know that they can perform if for that night or for whatever, right? Because, for example... Yeah, I think I think like with Viagra, it's more like for people who are having issues physically mm -hmm. rather than for emotional reasons, you know, like older guys and stuff like that, that maybe have physical issues, but aren't necessarily having the emotional issues that someone like Rudius is having, um, you know, but we're dealing with a, a world of magic here. So, you know, a powerful aphrodisiac can do whatever it needs to do in the plot, you know? <laughs> Well, my thing is, and and I would I would have loved to have seen something like this, which is th this is just me self, I guess, fan self writing here, uh, him attempting to heal himself and noting that hey, that doesn't work because that this is a mental problem, not so much a physical problem, right? Mm. Espy, you've been mighty quiet over there. You okay, brother? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, well, I, I, I was, guess. Uh, wait. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just saying. Um, I was waiting for you to get into some of the more questions that you're going to try and get out of us. Yeah, we we were predicting what questions you were going to ask while we were watching the stream earlier, and we we know oh. some of the ones that are coming because you asked the audience, and I feel like you're going to ask us. Oh, ones involving maybe where Rudius might find what he was looking for in, in Soldat's view of like someone who he feels at home with or. Oh, I was about to say, uh, cause for me, this is very, and you guys can say, I, I guess you guys can't say anything if I ask it. <laughs> cause I was going to say for me, this feels like, like it's, it, it's like a Pokemon, right? Where we have Bulbasaur, we have Squirtle and we have Charmander. Charmander just up and left. Right. Squirtle is with the Squirtle gang. So who's left? Bulbasaur, right? So my question for you guys is this. Are we going to go ahead and, like, is Sylphie going to be his home? Is Sylphie going to gonna be the, the aspect of healing that he needs? Do it, babe. Do it, babe. Oh, God. <laughs> you get no answer from me. Oh, no. <laughs> 
oh god okay wait 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 okay hold on is Elena now I can look at you <laughs> that's no that's cheating that's cheating <laughs> never fallen into the traps again we got whole strats <laughs> you guys got holes. I've been sitting this on my lap the whole time I'm just like you, you wait Ed. I'm waiting it's <laughs> be right now giga chat mode uh <laughs> Fine, here's my Is Rydia's gonna recognize who Sylphie is immediately? Or is Sylphie gonna come off as like Fitz or not Sylphie? That's the right question to ask. That's smirk. Okay, so he's gonna have a little bit of issues. No. <laughs> now I'm just it was the right question. Yeah, I know, but now I'm looking more at his lips and specifically, like, whether or not he... <laughs> I up him, he up me, I up him. It's it's a game. Next week, we got the COVID mask. The, COVID... <laughs> the VTuber, like, trying to do a face reveal. <laughs> oh. Okay, now there's, like, absolutely nothing but tonality. This is going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just a little tiny icon. However, Nat, you do have oh, a giveaway as well, which I think is kind of cute. Is it that I go <laughs> the end of sentences? <laughs> you <do> that anyway. <laughs> no, you scoop up your vowels whenever uh, we hit on something, and you're like, you you want to go into, it, but you don't necessarily want to go into it. Like your vowel kind of goes up a little bit towards the ending. Sorry, this is just like <laughs> no SP. <laughs> right. If there's ever like an inquest into like something that one of us has done. Oh God, could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, like my my, I guess my my question still stands is like, is Rudy gonna have like first off difficulty? Even I have a tell. Apparently, this is ridiculous. How can I have a tell? I mean, we I don't appear on camera. Yeah, but we all. Acting <laughs> but sometimes our natural habits pop up, you know, like unknown natural habits, unconscious natural habits, and this is. In... Go ahead. You would be so rich if you just went if you just played poker for a living, Ed. I mean, I've gotten kicked out of a casino or two for for. No, I'm just not gonna. I'm not yeah, gonna stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I would never play poker with this man. <laughs> <laughs> Card counting, also being able to read your opponents when they're bluffing, because everyone has like a telltale yeah, sign. Counting. Card counting only really works for like blackjack or something where reading your opponents isn't important. Um, but reading your opponents is important in poker. Mm -hmm. So I would only sit at the blackjack table if me and Ed went to the casino. That's actually kind of good because uh, I'm pretty good at blackjack as well. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I am too, but it's easy to be good at blackjack. You just memorize the table. Right. What you do. And at you the know, end of the at the end of the day, if it's blackjack, it is you and your your people versus the dealer. And I think people need to yeah. understand that, like, because you can really mess up your entire table if you don't know how to play correctly. Yeah, but so, it's really fun when you when you do know how to play and you've got a group of people there. I prefer that to poker. Mm -hmm. I I really like playing blackjack in the casino. So my my I guess going through this, my other question for you was this: Are God, how do I frame this? Because you're not going to find a way that we're going to tell you anything now. <laughs> you you, th you think so? <laughs> yeah. Here, let me let me think of a way to frame this properly. Is there? Okay, I, I think I got it. Beforehand, right, we've seen Rudius be creative in the way that he goes ahead and uses his, I guess, artistic endeavors, whether it was that statue figurine that I really, really want, or other aspects in, in his world to express himself and be able to go and like lay off some of his emotions. Are we going to see Rudy in the future go back into some of his artistic endeavors, or is this like a cut-all-be-all, -all, like, Rudy is like, just going to work on himself, 
this is not something that that's going to be addressed. Like it's in the past. No, we'll see more of that. Okay. Nah, Rudy's playing against himself. Oh, okay. 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 I, I don't huh. think that's a big spoiler answer. That that is something that stays with him for life. His interest. I mean, in he says in season one that he wants to keep fulfilling his desire to spread the word of the Super Tribe. Yeah. So it's more of a question of do you really think he's going to fulfill that promise? And I think his love towards Rigid and his or respect and love, I think, is very strong. Because he makes figures of Rejad as well as Roxy. Couldn't he make so, money this way as well? I mean, there's a very big lucrative possibility there. I mean, when he sold the Roxy one, he got a pretty good coin for it, so... Although he'd have to find a way to mass-produce them, really. Mm. And mass-producing them is a difficult challenge, being at his skill level. Yeah. Uh, Considering he, how much other stuff has got going on. If he wanted to do any kind of business endeavors, he'd definitely have to get other people involved. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. I I'm like, I need to pull up the trailer. I'm like, who else is in this world? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Cause my, I guess my, my, my big question that goes through with this, uh, Number one, you're right. How would he mass reduce something? But are we, I feel like we're reaching the beginning of the school arc in the way that like this is transitioning. Am I right to assume that? I think we'll see previews in the next few days of what's going to be in the next episode, and those will answer that question. DNA says mass reduce. Yeah. Uh huh. I was just going to say refer to the uh, trailer for what could possibly be coming up well dna says mass produce find markets that accept graven idols i mean you could also just get a bunch of your friends and literally start making bank that way right like if i'm like sb nat have a wonderful idea on how to make a bunch of money like you guys down it's super easy but do you think it's really that easy for anyone to pick up that skill well you probably need like a trait yeah. right like a special ability or something to be able well, to Rudy's does it using earth magic if you couldn't do it using earth magic, you'd have to use manual sculpting skills. Either of those is a talent. Mm -hmm. So not anybody, you can just randomly get like your buds who are not doing anything on their lunch break to like knock out beautifully crafted figurines. Could you, you'd need a special type of person. Right. And uh, almost nobody can do that. Aliketh says earth magic plus chantless magic. Wait, but don't, I don't think, like, can adults learn chantless magic? Well, we don't really see any that can do it. What so, do you remember from season one? I, I don't remember adults having it, so I'm, I'm assuming no. Roxy couldn't, sadly, exactly. So Aliketh, are you? Oh, okay. I'm. I'm gonna stay away from that. My mind's just gonna go fucking wild if I if I start taking this down logically out of what's being said. <laughs> so, how do I frame this? Yeah, I have so many like. Yeah, we've got. Um, Mash Tank says Timothy said one of his teachers at the academy could. But that only tells us that someone was an adult who could do it. That doesn't tell us whether they learnt it as a child or an adult. So what so if Rudy gets really a bunch of kids? Whether adults can learn it. Right. Where would he get a bunch of kids? I don't know. Go to an orphanage. <laughs> Just Rudy has adopts a bunch of kids and teaches them uh, magic. I don't know. Because I'm like, Where I'm looking... Go ahead. No, but in this kind of setting, where would you get even one kid? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I was just completely contradicting our like counter child labor. Twitter's gonna rage, JP style. I was just completely countering what they were saying because they were just saying like adults, 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 and that's why I'm like, huh? Well, couldn't you just get like exactly like child labor or something? I don't know where he would get it. I'm just stating it out there. Like that would be interesting. Hey yo. Well, where did where did now for me get Raftalia? <laughs> nah. Wait, who? 
<laughs> Who's this? Wait, 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 wait. I didn't say nothing. I mean, good. Shield here. I have not seen Shield heroes. So I don't know what. Yeah, I knew, had, I knew he didn't know Shield heroes. So I, I just didn't say. Like, I don't know what I mean. I'm like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> oh. I actually, knew, I knew he was staying anime only on that. When we start talking about it next season, we'd already talked about it. So. <laughs> I feel like I've been missing out now. I feel like I should have started watching Shield Hero. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, follow up question then is: Can he genuinely make friends in this environment, or would he see others as just people that are following him for whatever reason? Like ad adopting yourself into an environment of school. Go ahead, Esby. If he could make friends. How would that approach go? Would he be very forthcoming, very energetic, or would he be very submissive, or would he be aggressive? I'm just going to go and get another drink for a second while you two discuss this one. Sounds good, Nat. I feel like he might be... People might be like, oh, he's the mysterious type, or oh, he's so like dismissive. But you know how that drives some people. Some people are like, oh my God, he's dismissive. Oh, like we, we got to go and like, you know, or for some people, he might just need to go ahead and put them in their place, right? Because I'm assuming he's going to grow with Soldat to the point where he needs to go ahead and start asserting himself and his boundaries and start being a little Soldatian in that way, which is like, you know, calling shit out how it is, putting people where they are and doing what needs to be done. So I hope he starts focusing on himself. I, I, I would think so. I don't think... If I don't th you, Go ahead. I was going to say, if you think he would become a little bit more forthcoming, a little bit more dominating in his personality, what do you think would be the catalyst of that? See, now that's, that's the real question. Maybe someone triggering him. Uh, if he makes a genuine friend, someone going after them, that could be, cause Rudy can be pretty protective of the people that he cares about. Uh, if he has a dog, He's if he has very protective of certain people. Yeah. Uh, if he has like a dog or a pet, whatever people, you know, him going John Wick about it, anything like that. That's one of my main environments. One of my main things is Rudy seems to be like a very genuine, caring people where if he has a connection with you, he'll stand up for you, you know? So I, hmm, hmm, hmm. Mm. That you guys are you guys are allowing me to like think deeply about like what what do you mean by this, SP? What do you mean by this? I'm asking very good questions here. You are asking really, really fucking good questions. See, I've actually been adapting to your uh, psychology methods each week. I've been kind of paying really close attention, and then I've been watching the streams ahead as well as make sure we cut our streams early so that I can listen and learn as much as I can in that period. Ooh, yeah, okay. we, we had we had some prep time this week. Oh, you guys <laughs> had some prep time? <laughs> okay, so... No, I we guess... just, when we finished our stream, we just stayed on voice chat and watched your stream together so we could... Oh predict what you were going to ask us and how we were going to not reveal a thing because to Espy this is a, a very important game that we yeah like. it is I love this game and uh, yeah and when we get to ReZero it's going to be even more fun because it will be you two against me See, that's why it's actually really good that I'm learning from Ed, because I'm going to use what I learned from Ed against you. Yeah. You're really easy. Yeah, but also I just go, Espy, do you mind if I spoil you about this? And you usually <laughs> go, no, I probably already know, and then I spoil you. Because he hasn't even finished Mashoku Tensei, right? And I and he hasn't read Redundancy. So I, n I actually know stuff that he doesn't know about Mashoku Tensei, but whenever I'm like... Oh, you know, oh, no, you probably haven't reached that bit yet. Do you mind if I tell you? And he's like, no, I don't mind. I've probably heard some hints anyway, and I'll just tell him. And then, so he, he might think that I'm easy. I don't know. I probably am easy, actually, because I just really I'm, like sharing the cool stories. With right. People, but, you know. I've seen how easy you are to crack because of how 
Ed's asking you questions and how you kind of... It's because I want to tell in a way him. You in, yeah, indirectly you answer the question. And it's I noticed that. I want to tell him, though. Like, I try, I'm try. i fighting against myself. Right. More than yeah, anyone. I want to I wanna tease him. I want to tell him, but yeah, not... Yeah, you want to tease him. Yeah. I, just want, I just want him to know the cool things that we know, you know, because... But I don't want to ruin it for him either. So I might seem easy, but... It's, so for, it's because I'm not playing the same game. I'm fighting against myself and my urge to just be like, I want to see what Ed thinks about this because it's so cool. So know? this whole game is you fighting against yourself and I'm fighting against Ed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which, which is a good battle. it's going to be like, I'm the only one that's read it. So it's going to be like both of you. Oh, I have Also, uh -huh. also because ReZero isn't finished... I also have theories about what's going to happen that we don't know whether they will or not. So none of us really know. I have but a lot of I questions. You are ahead of you, so it's going to be like really weird when we get to ReZero. No questions about ReZero or Mushoku Tenso? Oh, I have literally like a list of questions about ReZero. Uh, so it will be interesting once we get to ReZero now. I hope you're prepared because like... Yeah legitimately i would go off the I'm rails prepared. theorizing yeah when, when season three comes around i'm prepared but next season we're going to be doing um shield hero and eminence in the shadow so if you if you want to keep this thing going you might have to watch shield hero up to where it's up to you oh 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 okay okay i was about to say i love eminence eminence is my fucking <sighs> Eminence is so funny. Yeah, uh, maybe we can just join you for Eminence if you don't want to catch up on Shield Hero, but I think you would like to talk about Shield Hero. I think there's some stuff in there that you would really go to town on. See, now you're saying that. Now I'm so fucking curious. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait there's a, a minute. lot of trauma stuff that you can break down oh, in Shield Hero. so much trauma in Shield Hero. Yeah. It's like, like trauma the anime at first. <laughs> there's some trauma inside your trauma, so you can check out the trauma in the trauma. Even in episode one. Even in episode Every one? Every episode's trauma. Oh, God. Yeah, just watch oh, episode God. one of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero and you will have a billion things you'll be ready to talk about. So, speaking of trauma, yeah, I, I, I guess go, going, like, redirecting and a asking this question then. Is Elena Lee's going to be the agent of change for Rudeus? Hmm. The transition. What for well, what is her thoughts of Paul, though? Well, I mean, she might not like Paul, right? Mm. But that doesn't Do mean that she really wants to get Paul. Well, I mean, she heard the name and she got all like, oh, wait a minute. But the, the, the Paul's gang is out and searching for family, right? For yeah. Zenith, yeah, and others. So my, my assumption on... Anybody who is displaced, really, but for Paul, obviously, Zenith is the most important. But his gang is basically just finding anyone who is enslaved or survived the the teleportation incident. Here's a question for you: Do you think Rudy will be the one to help Anna Lilis get over some of her issues? Hmm. Hmm. Probably. I, I, that's a, that's a, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know because he can be a good sounding board for some people, just like a majority of us are, right? But I'm like, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be just a sounding board. There are other ways of assisting than just listening. Oh, gosh. especially for someone with her particular issues. <laughs> He's basically saying, do you think Elena, Lisa, and Rudy are going to get it on? I know Oof. what he's asking, but I'm trying to counter it. Yeah, but I'm asking that question. Does he think that they are? Is it going to be cathartic, though? That is my question to you. Is him getting it on with Dylan and Elise actually going to help him or no? Because, like, if we're go if we're asking well, question by question, that's that that's my. You, you can only answer that if you answer whether it would even happen. Because even if it yeah, does happen, that's why I asked the question before. Right. Even if it does happen, is it going to heal him? And I think not. 
So, and, and, and like, does that mean you think it is going to happen and it's going to have a negative effect on Rudy? Or do you think it's not going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen. And if it does happen, I'm honestly just going to be surprised at how much Riz Elena Lise has because she can pull anyone and anything. But just judging from the fact that, like, yeah, they might get hot and steamy or whatever. But my my man is still suffering. My man is still, like, you know, that's a lot of work to get through. It's not just something you heal overnight. If it does happen, though, um, I mean, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I might have to bring out the TOS filter for that. That's going to be a little difficult, though. For all the Bobby people G. discussing who has the most trauma out of, now for me, Subaru and Rudeus, I have to say Subaru. But, yeah. <laughs> hmm. We're not here to talk about that, but I just wanted to weigh in with my view on that as someone who's read all three of them. Subaru is kind of designed to be able to go through more trauma than anyone in real life ever actually could. Mm -hmm. Because normally the worst thing that can happen to you, like watching everyone you care about die and then dying yourself painfully, can only happen to you once. How long is it going to take for Eris to come back? That's the right question to ask. It's just a direct spoiler-seeking question, isn't it? Because <laughs> like, here's my... How long, do you, exactly how long do you think it's going to take for her to finish her training? <laughs> no, like... <laughs> <laughs> Let me just shoot straight, right? Spoiler question. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> so... Here, here, here's where, where, where I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and go into this, right? Which is... Is Rudy going to spend his teenage years trying to find himself? I.e., is this going to be more than just a couple of years of separation and more like a decade or two before Eris comes back or even makes a reintroduction into this world? And I know you're about to say that is a good question to ask, right? Because I, I can. Mean, it's like we can't put a time frame on it because that would be a spoiler. Obviously, you know she wouldn't be in the story anymore if she was never going to be seen again. So I don't think it's like a bad question to ask when we'll see her again. Um, will she come back into Rudy's life is perhaps a different question. Will we see what she's doing on her own is another question that actually we don't know how the anime might handle such a thing. So you know it's it's not something we can answer in the light novels it is explained what she's doing in this time um mm. but whether that will be in the anime or not we can't say we don't know masters is asking if they try to connect who do we, who do you think will make the first attempt to reconnect honestly the way that i'm seeing a, the way that i'm seeing it is a trip of the inverse i e every character has a different like, for example, Sylphie represents a, a big version of his childhood self, right? If we're going to go ahead and go into that, where Sylphie represents what, like, uh, I guess, like, your childhood best friend, your home, your whatever, right? Roxy represents sort of that teacher that has steamed that growth pattern. And I guess, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Y'all are, y'all are allowing me to cook for a second. Wait a minute. I, I want to bring something up just for a quick second here. Uh, hold on. Uh, 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 mm, no, not that. Okay, hold on. I don't mean to cover you guys. I'm bringing this over here. Oh, God. Ugh, that's the ugly version. Let me get the better version. Better. Okay. Just looking at this on the side, right? Who's letting this man cook? Not me. Not me, man. So at the very bottom of the triangle, we always have physiological and safety needs, right? Now I'm really fucking curious. Wait a minute. These characters are designed in a very, very interesting way. In a very, very interesting way. So what, in case you guys are wondering, dude, what are you talking about? On the side, it's a safety, physiological, love, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. So I'm wondering, 
Sophie, Sophie represents a big form of safety as a child, and even physiologically speaking, right? Uh, so if we're looking through an aspect like that, right, esteem, what did Roxy do but build up his, his esteem to be able to go ahead and take a step out? I'm not sure about sexual intimacy. We can go ahead and, and, and take that out there. But build up his confidence, his achievements, so on and so forth. And when it came to, I guess, aspects of, of self-actualization, wasn't he more creative and able to go ahead and teach others when with Eris? So my question then just comes all the way around to are these different aspects of development for Rudius himself that way? Aren't those just signs of what people need? Though, right. That pyramid? I mean, people need that, but people can also fill those needs, right? So, for example, SP yeah. can be can be my security. He can be my safety. He's my my friend that I've grown up with for a long time, and he understands me. He knows who I am, who I was, who whatever. Nat, you could be the the individual that like, uh, you know, when I when I'm with him, I feel like my physiological and my safety needs are met because he understands. He brings that safety element, that trust element to being vulnerable up again. I am a completely broken man, right? Let's put it this way, and I go all the way over to. Uh, you, Nat, right? And let's say that you teach me a lot of things. You teach me the ins and outs of like, dude, value yourself. You're incredible, so on and so forth. And you might be, and, and that might be in, in like you building up my esteem and building up like me trying to find love as well as SB does, right? And say that like all mm -hmm. of this is happening. And I'm like, okay, Blade Dragon's here. Blade Dragon, I'm like, I, I can teach you things. I'm at that point where I have both of you that help me establish myself. And I go over and I'm like, you know, both of these people in my past have taught me these things. Blade Dragon, I can teach you. I can be there for you. I can like, you know, I can go ahead and be creative and spontaneous and all of these like wonderful things. So I'm a better person thanks to you guys. So like looking at this, I'm like, it feel, feels as though every character has helped them up as much as like you know his cracks going all the way back down sorry if that made yeah. no sense okay, but yeah, for no, that actually makes a lot of sense um it's it's not something that contributes to how we can answer how the different characters will affect him later on but i think it's clear to see you know if you look at the purple section where it talks about self-esteem and all that you can see that those are things he got from roxy mm -hmm. as a child you know, but then they were knocked, he was knocked down again in those areas by what happened with Eris. And I think, you know, there are elements he's getting from different people. There are elements he has in the past got from other people. But it's not once you've achieved that rank, that's permanent. You know, No, no. It, it, of like, course, it's once fluid. Once someone's taught you self-esteem, you're never going to have self-esteem issues again. It's um, in this story, it doesn't really work like that. And... Uh, you know, obviously it doesn't in real life either, but like right. the author is mindful of it. It's not just like you have overcome problem A and now the now the protagonist mm. will never experience problem A again because he's got character B in his life who helped him get over that. It's, well, uh, I, I guess let, let me ask it like this. If Eris were to come back in here, would he be okay? Looking at the at the tri like the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I don't think so, because he's he, like he still has all that trauma, so that that eliminates her. If Roxy comes back in, right, what could she raise back mm -hmm. up again? She could probably give him a little bit of safety. Uh, <laughs> That's what he's looking to raise back up again. <laughs> <laughs> he's peppy. <laughs> But, but that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the main aspect that like it, it's highlighting in here. It's like, what can these different individuals start raising up again? And I'm starting to see a, like an amazing pattern involved that I didn't think was going to be present, but it's true. We are all fluid in this triangle. We all have some things. We don't have everything and we go up and down according to the needs of uh, the day of our environment of whatever. I am so curious yeah. as to how this is going to play out. And Natalie, you don't even know. You just completely like hyped me up because I'm like, I wonder what there this order. People... 
you know, there are some people in the world that can go their whole lives without ever having sex, you know, like highly religious people, monks and stuff. Right. You know, so the fact that it's in the bottom tier along with food and air uh -huh. is not necessarily true for everyone, you know. Um, well, I mean, you know, there, there are all kinds of things about that triangle that aren't universally. Yeah, not everybody needs every one of them. Some of them, obviously, we do need. But there, there can be people who... Um, so I'm going to challenge you on that one. Right? Because it, it, the triangle is on, like, a primal level in terms of, like, mm -hmm. stuff that we are not holding back, right, on, on ourselves by yeah. societal or religious uh, cultures and that. So, for example, a lot of people still still masturbate, right? Because masturbation is still considered self-sex yeah. in, in, in that way. But when it comes to like religiosity, a lot of people, it's that self control that they want over that need. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, that's, that's definitely a thing that it's that self discipline that they value. But then there are asexual people who just aren't interested. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, a lot of people say like reproduction is a basic human need, whereas I personally have never felt any desire to have babies because. Right they are annoying and not as cute as kittens and because they're annoying you know, <laughs> never, i just never felt the need to like do that um the sex side of things yeah because that's nat that's has enough children on twitter mm? you have enough children on twitter you don't need more <laughs> i am the mommy of the the community i guess i adopted right. everyone but no, I mean, like, if I felt the need to raise a child, I would be, I would see no difference between adopting one and having one of my own. I don't have that biological drive to, like, continue my DNA. If I felt the need to, like, raise a child because I wanted to have, you know, the, the relationship with them and experience, like, bringing someone up and teaching them things, I'd be just as happy to adopt one. In fact, right. more happy because, you know, it wouldn't ruin my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, you know, a lot of people think that that's just an insane way for a person to be. Like, they they think that it's intrinsic to humans that we want to reproduce. Mm. And so the fact that I just never have really considered that, I can understand that there might be people out there who have never really thought it was that important to have sex or even masturbate or anything. You know, like, right. that, that need just wasn't there for them. And so even some of the things we think of as instinctive don't apply to every single person. I mean, other than the need to, like, have shelter and breathe and, you know... Homeostasis, like excrete. Homeostasis, <laughs> yeah. I mean, those things are so, survival. It, but uh, other well, instinct, instinct things, there are humans that don't have them. Right. And for Maslow's hierarchy and needs, a majority of this are the individuals that, like, fit, I guess, the standardization of the bell curve. So, like... Uh, I, I, I'm, I hate to I hate to to say this, but it's like a very realistic setting in most psycholo like psychological settings. It's like extremities, like when it comes to like, for example, sex is just seen as, and and there's a difference between sex and sexual intimacy. Like SB and I can be going hard at it, right? Like no tomorrow, and that can just be meaningless sex. And Nat and I can have like these deep conversations and like genuinely have like. Uh, sexual intimacy, right? So it's a big difference in both of those, and I'm, I'm highlighting that because for some people get confused in that, but a lot of people that fall into like the, I guess like the bell curve, like I guess what's considered like normal society, is sort of what it would apply for, right? Because if we take sex out of that, you still have a lot of really really important aspects in there that you need uh, to survive. You don't need all of them, but you at least need most of them. You think about it, we all had to manage without a lot of them during lockdown. Right. Right. And uh, that's had a lot of effects on everybody ever since, I think. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the end of season one, Ed? Where he's walking really sadly out of the tent? <laughs> After that. Oh, no, actually. Well, what are you talking about specifically? There was a scene with a certain uh, individual that was looking over some paperwork. And that individual was recommending another individual that they felt very confident in. Wait, 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 what? What? 
hold on. Oh, uh, it's coming up. At the end of season one, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it kind yeah, of makes sense that the next episode that came after that was episode zero. Mm-hmm. All right. I was like, because I do not remember that. Like, my mind must just be like... Hey, chat, there's no spoilers. This is in the anime. I'm just telling him. Does he remember it? Yeah, I'm like, I'm wait a minute. the ingredients and I'm letting him cook. You're giving me the ingredients and just letting me cook, bro. <laughs> all right. Season two, all the way down. I'll wake up and take a step. What a beautiful name. Yeah, this would be post credits, right? Mm hmm. Hold on. Uh, let me bring chat up for this. All right, chat, here you go. Uh, now I need to go ahead and bring one other thing. Hold on. Because I don't want to get in trouble for this one. Just so that we're all in this together. It's not... Mm -hmm. it, it's... We're all in this... All right, never mind. Here we go. Uh, Is that some high school musical, Riz? You were giving us that? <laughs> it, it, it was some high school musical stuff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's see. に面白いな。あなたはこれが作り話ではないと、そう言いたいんですね。はい。結局あなたと彼はどういう関係なのですか僕にとっては恩人であり、師匠であり、友達でもあるけど、そうですね。一言で言えば、一番尊敬している人です
I believe so, right? That would be, yeah, that would be the reason why he needed money. <sighs> My heart hurts. And does Rudy have enough money? I mean, he is a well-renowned adventurer. Right. And did he not just decide to leave with a very skilled group of individuals that do high-paying jobs? Oh, he pro yeah, he probably has the money for it. Let's be real about it. But my thing is, does this mean... Because the, the way that I look at it, right, it reminds me of Kakegurui, where they're sitting down and... It, it, how much influence does... Uh, I forgot her name. Why am I forgetting her name? Ah, ah. Um, the person that Sophie serves for, or used to serve for. Ariel. Is, Princess yeah, Ariel. Yeah, Ariel. How much influence does Ariel have in this school? Is she like the president or something? Or is she like... Like, what position of power is she in? Here's a counter question. Why uh. is she so interested in... Fitz's friend. Well, no, no, that's that was a nice redirect. Hold on, that was a really nice redirect. SP, you are learning, my friend. That was a beautiful redirect. You got me almost going there. <laughs> Good redirect. Um, As for how much power Ariel has, I mean, she's a princess, but she's trying to escape from assassins, right? That's what we saw in episode zero. Um, don't you think someone in that position would have to earn any kind of power they would have in an institution like a university in another country? My thing is... You wouldn't is, just be, I'm a princess, I'm on the board, right? My thing... Oh, hold on, because now, now comes the next question is, why would you want a position of power? Because if you're in a position of power... Is it like isn't her brothers well, like or what not trying to come after her life or something? Do you remember episode one and what she decided her decision was in life? Right. So this is this is my again. I'm 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 going to ask this question uh, with it. Her being in a position of power, couldn't she scout out for essentially? Um, I hate to put it this way, but pawns in her chess game. Who do you think would be the best one? Our man Rudy is. Let, let's be real. You have who you, does she have in her pocket? Oh man, oh man. I was about to say you have you have Sylphie there. You bring in Rudy is. You if they're not making. Oh my god. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm gonna ask this question, and because you guys are giving me a lot to think about, will she put a time limit on Sylphie? Then, if no advancements are questioned, right. Because if no advancements were being done, say like, yeah, I'm telling you, yo, ask Nat out. Ask Nat out. Nat is there for you. Take, if you don't ask her in three days, I'm going to assume it's fair game. Wouldn't you feel pressured? Do you think Ariel will interfere? Or assist? In what capacity? I mean, if, if you're telling me that you're master right your your friend your whatever taught you everything that you know i would literally pay a lot of money uh, i'm just gonna be straight up about it to try and have them in our side i would do anything to have them in our side does she need to pay though whoa, whoa. how does a university work scholarships oh no oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> the other question you might have to ask is who issues scholarships and how do they get into the position to do that because again she's a she's an exile princess they're not just going to let her on the board Well, I mean, you have to have some sort of pull, whether it's actually having the smarts to do anything. So you, she has to gain power somehow. Regardless, if she did get into mm -hmm. into an environment like this, wouldn't that be more How than... How do you think she would gain power? How do I think she would gain power? Hmm. That's a good question. That is a really good question. I don't know. 
I don't know. Probably because it has to be more than just smarts. It's the political compass that you hold on it yourself, right? Because, like, I hate to put it this way, but a lot of times it's about how you talk to people, how you move around, and how you. Sometimes there are some people. Here's a counter question. Sure. Add some fuel to that. Why did people fear her in the first, uh, episode zero? What kind of power did she have in episode zero? You mean aside from being a princess? <laughs> yeah. Besides yeah. the actual standard of the name, but what kind of power did she have? Like, how did yeah. she acquire it? And... She wasn't next in line to the throne. So within her yeah. own family, like, what power did she have? Why would they want to assassinate her? Why would they think she was actually a threat? And she's a girl and she's not first in line to the throne. What qualities did she have? Remind me yeah, on I this. Yeah, I was trying to move, yeah. move around it a little bit to get him to guess it. Yeah, remind me a little bit. What what, what are you guys hinting at here? Because I'm trying to think. I'm Do you like, remember a scene where Fitz was having a panic attack? Right. Why did everyone turn away from Fitz? Oh, because of her singing, right? She was able to go ahead and... And what kind of skill is that? That's charisma. Right. So, well, it's I mean, the Riz. Riz. I was Ariel about to has, say. Ariel has the Riz for sure. Yeah, I was going to say. Riz princess. She probably has a lot of Riz. I'm not going to doubt that. Though, and I guess I am going to, I am going to use this. Is she going to dangle Sophie like a piece of meat in front of Rudy? Or vice versa? That's the right question. Ooh, ooh. Then the question comes down to how badly does Ariel want Rudy if she does? And also how loyal is Ariel to Sylphie? Are they really friends or is Sylphie a pawn? True. Actually, very, very true. I mean, the first thing, Ariel, they were talking about Booba. <laughs> masters <laughs> but no like my 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 line of questioning is just transitioning and transitioning as as we're as we're going through this because what I, what i'm thinking is number one right i feel like everyone's well actually number one now now that this is coming into mind everyone's in a weird position of power and fight and whatnot like in this world that I got to ask this question because now this is coming into mind. We saw a statue of the Demon Lord when they went into the caves. Kishirika. Yeah, Kishirika. So, <clears throat> what role does she have to play in what's upcoming? Because my thing is, uh, the, like, they, they don't, they just don't write nothing for no reason, you know? Well, consider we did talk about this last week um, after last week's episode. We talked about how she re re is reborn when she dies and comes back as a child each time. But she doesn't always live long enough to uh, reach the adult form that we saw in the statue. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that was shown to us just as law so that we can know just how powerful she is and how much people revere her when she does reach her adult form or do you think that's something we're going to see happen do you think the she's going to be a formidable maybe an end boss or maybe an ally or something along those lines you know someone really integral to the the overall conflict of the story which we're not even clear on yet but well i mean aren't Ru aren't his eyes special or something like Jericho is. yeah and well doesn't rudius have one of his eyes or her eyes my bad yeah he gave he gave her she gave him a demon eye so which what allows it... him to just see a, a, a split second into the future which helps him in fights um she has many demon eyes she she showed those in episode in season one um that's her thing she can give you demon eyes she has demon eyes. We saw Roxy ask her to use her demon eye of clairvoyance to find Zenith. 
Well, well, this is why I'm so, asking. Uh, yeah, this is why I'm asking this: is wouldn't people hunt after individuals that may have this if they acquire some sort of information about it? Because, like, if you had, yeah, a we've, sp- seen, we've seen other characters with eye patches, right? True. Wait, have we? They're not that yeah. rare. They're rare, but they're not ridiculously rare. <laughs> the chat Kishirika is like, and you get a demon eye, you get a demon eye. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. I mean, like, she gives it to Rudius because he gives her food when she's hungry. Um, she was going to give Roxy one for paying off her bar tab, but Roxy said she would rather she used her one to locate Zenith. Mm. You know, um, she kind of, she has a strange sense of logic where it's actually easier to give someone like a life-changing ability than it is to just find her own way of making money so she can buy food, (laughs) you know. (laughs) She could just charge people for using those skills and get money, but, you know, she just, the the immortal demon race, like Kishirika, they just have this weird sense of logic that's unique to them because they live forever, you know, they have no sense of time. It's that they're, they're strange people and they have a strange mentality that fits with the, the race that they are and the things that they can do. Um, so the demon eyes are not especially rare. You mm. know, we, we see that Elaine has an eye patch. She, she takes that off and uses hers when, when Aramanthi appears. Um, you know, we've already seen more than one character that has one, and we've only seen a few characters in this world, if you think about what Rudy's actually seen. So, no, people wouldn't really hunt down people who have the demon eyes. They're not that powerful. They just give you a little perk, you know. And for most people, they it's not like if you, could, if you had a demon eye, you could take their eye and you'd have it either. So, no, people don't really hunt down people with demon eyes. Hmm. See, but this is also something else that I'm wondering is, wouldn't, because Rudius at his age, I, I think has a lot of accolades, right? Like everything that he's doing, whether it's dead end or, you know, as as news is spreading about him, Quagmire Rudius or whatever, wouldn't that also be something that like, I guess a lot of people in this school wouldn't necessarily have? What, the demon eye? No, not the demon eye. I'm talking about, like, the accolades and, like, uh, the, I guess, the name that he's spreading for himself. Yeah, he's he's acquiring fame and renown. And that would be something you would think a, an academic institution would want to bring in. I mean, are are there any other characters you think have special skills that might be of value to such a place? Well, I'm just processing everything. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, because my thing is, if, if, if I thought like, Oh, Espy, the, the master, the Riz Lord himself has appeared at this university. Right. And, Oh, I, I'm I'm this up and coming hot shot, and I hear oh, Esp the Riz Lord is here, and he doesn't really have Riz. I, I'm gonna go over there and see what he's really like. I would assume that there's a lot of people that would try and follow, because you know, you know, there's a saying that's like even bad press is good press type of thing, where people will like you know try and make up like bad stories, good stories, everything in between about the person that is like growing in popularity in order to try and feel relevant, right? So I'm wondering if people would try and like associate themselves in some way shape or form with uh Rudius considering they've already done that when he was in dead end. They might do or um if you think about that old adage about prison where, like, if you're sent to prison, the best thing to do is to go and hit the biggest guy you can find. Oh, no, nah. Don't tell me that people are going to try and fight him. (laughs) Yeah, if if someone with a big reputation comes in, maybe some people will just try and prove themselves. Remember when you said you wouldn't say too much? (laughs) I'm I'm putting forward different options. Either maybe people suck up to him, maybe people try and fight him, these are all things and that could smart. occur in that situation. 
Maybe I just spent three weeks like studying him. Like you know. So prison rules. Fight the biggest, toughest guy you, you see in order to establish yourself, right? That's interesting. Or suck up, yeah? I mean, that's what we all do. That's what we all do, right? <laughs> oh, man. But that's really interesting. I'm, I'm really, really curious to see how this is all going to... Yeah. I'm not trying to like frame Rudius as some kind of gang leader or something in the in the prison environment, but it turns out he's a gang leader. He has his own little crew of people. <laughs> that would be fun. He's like head of the delinquents or something. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway. SP, I've seen you've done your homework, though. I've, I've noticed a couple of the redirects you've done, which is actually quite, quite nice. Uh, nice to see to see your your involvement in like the ways that you redirect as well. Also, you too, Nat. You've done really well. <laughs> really, really well. Eso será grandioso. What, a pimp named uh, Rudius? <laughs> Rudius walking around with his gang. Oh, gosh. Now I'm just going to keep thinking. Everyone wants to be Rudius' bottom bitch. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's <laughs> <laughs> just like, what did I Rudy's come back into? Would he be better than Butters? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> breaking in that cash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but overall, well, I I have a little bit more time before I gotta I, I gotta dip at least eat something and then go go into Zom 100. So I guess I'll 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 go into this, which is when looking at this story, when looking at this episode particularly, is there anything that you wish people would take away from it? That Sarah did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Right after so that's that's not a bully. So that's not a bully. <laughs> yeah. That too. I'm like, we're just gonna end up taking up Twitter and th throwing that on there. I'm gonna I'm gonna be on there like Sarah did nothing wrong. Oh yeah, this conversation will not end on this stream, I'm sure. We'll oh. probably be arguing it all week on Twitter, but yeah. Oh, my two Twitter threads are, or well, my two tweets are going crazy. Saw People that. are getting pretty messed up. Not a bully. Sarah did nothing wrong. These are the <laughs> hills we will die on, on Twitter this week. <laughs> you know what? I think I just might. I think you guys are giving me an idea to write like a giant thread as to why Sarah did what she did and then like how people are wrong about that perception. You guys are giving me so many little ideas here. I'm like, wait a minute. And then watch people on the Moshiko Tensei server uh, start blowing up and then being like, eh, he's reading the novels and bullshit again just because it doesn't fit their narrative. I can already see it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, everything, everything you need to know to argue whether Sarah was in the wrong or not was in that one episode. So even if you had read the novels, it wouldn't make a difference. Right. We've read the oh, novels. The content bit that um, the point of view was. Uh huh. After Rudy got slapped, it basically goes into her perspective, but there is one changed part. The woman from the brothel did follow Rudy, and that's how Sarah knew about the chick from the brothel. So yeah, Sarah the next day goes up to her, and the chick from the brothel basically has a bit of a lip towards Sarah because the girl from the brothel kind of sees Rudy's point of view and favors Rudy's side because of how he's been kind to her uh, sister and so she basically lays it down going um actually he's got problems and explains the whole ed process and then she goes oh i misunderstood goes to rudy's room and he's not there so sarah understanding that you know um she does get some closure on what happened to her rudius doesn't on what happened to him because he's just left yeah. with all that you know. and her last statement was the next time i meet him we'll talk it out basically oh oh that is oh i i kind of like the, so ah. spoiler, that is cut content that's cut because it's not going to be a next episode the next episode 
Oh you can tell years. by the time they made the, the post credit scene, the Alina Lee stuff, that we're going straight into that next. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, like, wow, that, oof. Oof. That that would, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine what must be running through her mind on hearing something like that, because that's, uh, that's big. That's something big to literally be told. I did like the way... Actually, as a, go ahead. JP Stahl, if you're saying you were hoping we'd have a novel read for that, I can do that tomorrow. If if that's something you really want, I can read that POV bit. Since it's only part of a chapter, I can read that out Ooh. on a video. Um, I, I did that with the some of the Eris POV stuff that was skipped in the first season, so I think it'll be fine. That's why I'm like... I. That's so impactful. As an anime only, though, I will say I did appreciate the episode. I not really like knowing anything about like the novel or what's happening here. It's it's nice. It was a nice. It wasn't. It didn't feel as rushed as like the other episodes where you know there's weird transitions and stuff. Like the only thing I called out was like there's one weird frame that like I I, I sort of brushed it off as whatever where Rudius looks like a ditto from Pokemon. He's off. <laughs> he's off in the distance, and it's just like a ditto face on him. And I'm like, okay. Oh God. But no, I, I overall, I, I think this is one of my favorite episodes uh, so far. Uh, if not my favorite episode so far, really, really well done. Yeah, it was great. And I'm With looking forward to seeing the, the Doom of Pendulum swing the other way this week. Because last week it was all, oh, I'm so scared that the season is going to be bad. And then this week everyone's like, yeah, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. You know, uh, the pendulum always swings with Mashoku Tensei. So. Right. <laughs> but I think if, it, if it's a good story, no matter what, like, I feel... Anime has to be cut down because you can't include everything from the light novel content on a show, sadly. Yeah, of course not. You only have 24 it minutes. Years to, and a load of animators will probably die of dehydration and stuff, you know? Like, mm -hmm. something that you can write in five minutes will take a week to animate. It's, you know, novels are only limited by how many things you want to say, whereas anime is a lot more, you know, you've got a budget there that has to be spent on the right things. And I think, right. you know, with this arc, there were a few missteps on the previous episode. Nothing I thought was dreadful, but there were some missteps. This one, you can see that this whole thing isn't being rushed. There were just some choices made that, you know, weren't necessarily what everyone would have wanted for that middle part of this arc, but this end part has been fantastic. I think I haven't seen anyone disagree with that. You know, I've seen some takes on some of the characters I don't like, as, mm -hmm. as we've been saying, sold out the bully, Sarah did nothing wrong. But when it comes to the actual production, I think I haven't seen anybody bitching about this episode so far. So... That might change when I get back on Twitter after the stream, but yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. I, I have a feeling like as soon as we take a look at Twitter, we're about to see like all these. Uh, Sarah is a horrible individual. So that is, or maybe vice versa, or maybe they, they might be like, you know what, this episode was good and or trash. Because who knows? Twitter, Twitter always surprises me. And there's some people with some wild takes that I'm just like, I don't know how you guys deal with them, but I am always surprised at like some of the the wildest takes out there. <laughs> you mean X? Sorry, uh, Twitter. Yeah, it's what's Twitter? What's this Twitter you speak of? Did Twitter change its name? Oh no! It's gonna be called X soon. Is X. it a porn site or something like? No, just no. one X, not three X's. Just not X. E X like an X, an X, but just an X. Just like an X, as we oh, say. The everything app. Oh God! Oh God! Yeah, I was explaining it... this to Nat um, before we went on stream. Space X, social X. Yeah, I mean, Elon Elon tweeted that he just likes X. He just thinks it's cool, you know. <laughs> it just reminds me of that drama where um where where someone says to Bender, "That's blackmail," and he says, 
I prefer the term extortion. The X <laughs> makes it sound cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. But anyways, guys, we appreciate you a ton. I hope that you guys enjoyed it here. Uh, SBNet, I love you guys. I always love the discussions and how deep we tend to go with it and all, every, every, all the juiciness that comes out of everything. Um, next we week. Like see, but we are evolving our skills at dealing with you every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to keep evolving. You guys are making me better and better. <laughs> uh, yeah, next it's like one of what? those epic rivalries from Yu-Gi-Oh! or something. <laughs> <laughs> well you've activated my trap card and you've activated my trap card <laughs> but no i was gonna say next week sadly i'm not gonna be here i am probably gonna come home rather late from where i'm heading towards so just giving you guys that heads up uh but the following week i should be more than down to recap two episodes if you guys are down for that oh, or so might... we have to wait like oh, really? actually six no hours from the start of the stream to be able to join if you've got to do two episodes <laughs> well no 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 because I, mean, I, I was gonna say because i should be back next week on the on the 30th but i'll I'll probably be streaming around 8 or 9 p.m or some like sometime like that so it's a wild hour yeah so oh, okay we'll you'll be around now i think you said last time yeah. yeah we'll see what happens i think it's possible like for me at least i can get up early in the morning and still meet that but um we'll oh. see but yeah well, I guess we'll be back to the regular schedule the week after that. Absolutely. Guys, I appreciate your time. Uh, here on Twitch, yo, I'm going to be right back. All right, we are taking a small little break. We just hit the five-hour mark here. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Five hours of Moshiko Tensei. Like, what else do you guys want? <laughs> we, did, we did three hours on our stream before we came on here, and then we watched yours for, like, an hour or two and then we came on here so, <laughs> it's been like Mishoku Tensei is our lives now on Sundays it kind of and is right good. we love it just wait until ReZero comes around then ReZero is going to be our lives for a bit oof but anyway